hands, dude. Okay. Come on. Jazz hands. All right. I hope you got your big girl panties on. Hank Strange is back in the building. Who moved my freedom podcast live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios with All right. with Mr. Oh, Kevin Dixie. Someone has someone has to put their headphones on. Mr. Kevin Dixie's in the building. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you doing today, Hank? Ready for HK. I'm doing good, my friend. How are you? How was your weekend? Uh, weekend was fine. Spent it down shooting some guns and checking out a new um, new establishment by the guys over at Black Rain Ordinance in Southwest Missouri. So it was, I had a good time. Yeah. I, I follow you. I follow you on the Instagram. So I, I was seeing some of the videos. I appreciate the videos. Instagram followings. Yeah, oh. dude. Tell you what, Forrest Griffin's bigger than you think when you see him in person. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Oh, that's, that's too bright, isn't it? Too yeah, bright? and of course we got uh, Mr. Walter Keller of Hello. Safety Harbor Firearms. What's up, Walter? How was your? Hello. Well, I know how your weekend was. I was hanging out with you yesterday. Saturday, I just did stuff around the house and put away generators that were still out from the storm, things like that. And then uh, Sunday, we went up to my the clandestine testing facility with Mr. Strange there and and his lovely wife Lola. And yeah. we busted some caps. <laughs> busted some caps. Okay, so cool. We have a lot of stuff to unpack here today. This is like a free for all Monday. So whatever you guys want to talk about, all the folks hanging out with us in the chat, I am gonna do um, like shout outs here in a second to all those folks in the chat. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Please click the thumbs up button. You know, click the thumbs up button. Share this oh, yeah. video with your family and friends. If you're not subscribed to the Hank Strange situation, please do so. Boom. Click the subscribe button. Of course, you know, Mr. Kevin Dixie has NOC firearms training. Click that button. Oh, why is the cuteness looking so sad today? <laughs> I don't know. I was just trying to ask her that. Caitlin, what's wrong? Yeah, what's wrong with the cuteness? Oh, uh, you just woke up? You still tired? Oh, well, you, yeah. Want to come back when you wake up? <laughs> hmm? No, you comment. Don't? no. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Okay, so the cuteness is not in a good mood. Um, first of all, before I get into all the different things I want to do, though, I want to dedicate this entire show to Mr. Larry Allen. That is the grandfather of our close friend, The Tyvon Show. Unfortunately, yeah. he passed today. Um, you know, that's terrible news. I know yeah. Tyvon's taking that pretty tough. World War II veteran, I believe, too. Yeah. Good dude. You know, yeah. without him, we wouldn't have The Tyvon Show. I wouldn't be here without those vets. So absolutely, none of us would be without those. My guys. daddy wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for the vets. So right, absolutely. Yeah. The uh, what is it? The Greatest Generation. That's what they say. That's what they say. You know, those guys worked harder than us, suffered more than us. Well, they had the depression too. A lot of them. <laughs> yeah, went through lots of craziness that we all just read about in books. Good and bad. Good yep. and bad. We yep. read about it in books. Those guys lived through it. Unfortunately, yeah. we're losing so many of them. If you still have uh, people from from that time period of uh, in this world still with you, appreciate them. Hold them close. Sorry to hear this, Tyvin. Everyone um, sends their love and condolences to you and the rest of the family. Yeah. So, all right. Um, you know what? Let me jump in here and do some uh, shout outs to folks who are hanging out with us in the chat. We've got Tango Hunter in the chat. What's up, Tango Hunter? The Archangel. Efrain Rodriguez, Joe Carpenter, in the in the chat, hanging out, talking. This this was like a real like uh, busy chat. Chris Bolas, <clears throat> what's up, Chris? They get the point that don't even need us in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, they just have their own party. Yeah. Rod Mills, in the chat, hanging out with us. What's up, Rod? Of course, the Tyvon Show is in the chat. Um, let me see. I'm going down here. The I think I said the Archangel, right? Yes, you did. Yeah, I did. Okay, Archangel is in there. Crispy, what's up, Crispy? In the building. Uh, Brian, what's going on, Brian? E Rock, shut up and play your guitar. Shut up and dance. Yeah. <laughs> DC2 Mega Boost, slide release. So there we go, slide release. Sugar Bear also in there. Um, I'm trying to go down here and see, get past the conversations that are happening. Yeah, man, these conversations are getting deep, getting deep. Okay, guys, if you've got things you want to talk about today, stuff that happened over the weekend, last week you didn't get off your chest or whatever, please let us know. Yeah. And uh, we will get into it. Sergeant Hulk as Big Toe. <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant Hulk as Big Toe. Okay, what's up? I don't know. That's a good one. I like the I like the weird names. The Range One, Adios Amigos, also in here. So there you go. Um, let 
me see. Let me see who else is in here. I'm trying to see Tony London in the house. That he's from Gainesville, and also from London apparently. In case you didn't know, I know apparently. Apparently, Tony London went to the same. I don't know if it was like a middle school or what the hell you call it that I went to in London. Wow. Uh, Henry Cavendish. So there you wow. go. That's that's what. Right. Yeah, Vanessa Kitty. Um, Eli Jimenez, TJ Blaze, Robert McNeely. Um, let's see. Uh, Mark Wagner, 904 Outdoors, like you said, Walter. 904. Steve's in here. Gerald Weldon, Big Kevin. No slash bowl. <laughs> okay, that's a cool one. Yeah. I'm gonna All right, David G, Kentucky Firearms Network. So I carry my revolver in single action. What's up to everyone? <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Uh, we really appreciate that. And like I said, don't forget to click the thumbs up. And of course, share this video with your friends and family. We're going to talk about lots of different things, whatever you guys want to talk, talk about and some things we want to talk about. So um, can, right. should, should we take a look at, you know, I noticed Kevin, you know, he's not wearing any HK stuff. He's got, See, he's got the Black Rain Ordinance stuff on. Look at that. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Is, Come on. Is the show here trying to, trying to be nice and trying to be respectful, but you know what? <laughs> he just won't let me breathe, will you? Leave that better alone. not be a freaking Shimaga from HK. No, I'm, just, oh. I'm just saying that you oh. won't. Oh, oh, now you're getting all militant. <laughs> you know, Wait a I, second. You no, know, you won't. You won't let me relax. Oh, boy. So, you know. I'm gonna oh, sit here and enjoy the day. He's an insurgent. He's an HK insurgent. <laughs> yes, things have gotten real. It's always close. Oh, Remember, boy. That. all right. I'm trying to be nice, but and you I, notice how he was ready for that, Walter? Did you? Know uh, uh, yeah, he was ready to strike, man. Okay. Yeah, you know. Now, out of respect for my guys down in Black Rain. Yep, yep. Yeah. Okay, See, right. now those black. I hope those Black Rain guys aren't watching because they're yeah. seeing you flip flop right now. Oh, hey, yeah. well, they, look, well, I did show up to their stuff with my HK stuff on, so. You did? Yes, I did. Oh, I had, okay. I had, now I have my, yeah. my stuff on, my clothing on, but, you know. I said, and they hey, weren't perturbed by the HK hat? They were not perturbed because I was shooting their wonderful products. Oh, okay. Their so, products had me smiling. So tell us about this. What were you up to? All right, so uh, Black Rain Ordnance, for you guys who aren't familiar, you can look up BlackRainOrdnance.com. Um, there are... They're a um, manufacturer, uh, ARs out of uh, Tango South Hunter says you're a blood. You threw up the red. <laughs> uh oh. I guess I, you know what? I have to think. No, no, I grew up in a crip neighborhood, so. No. Oh. <laughs> no, they wouldn't be okay with this right now. They wouldn't yeah, you might be in trouble. But then my, my company colors are uh, black and red, too, so I might not want to go uh -huh. back over there. Yeah. Okay. I have to think about that. Um, but. Um, no, they, they just opened up uh, their – Black Rain's been making rifles since 2009, but they just uh, opened up their own storefront um, down in southwest Missouri. It's about 100 miles away from Tulsa. Um, and they had their grand opening uh, connected with their manufacturing plant, and it's a beautiful storefront. They had uh, some rifles out back you can go test and shoot, and they had uh, some special guests in there. They had a couple of dudes from um, BM, the BMX world. I'm not really – Hip or familiar with who they are, um, but they also had uh, Forrest Griffin, who I'm very familiar with who he is, because that's the reason why I started watching UFC fighting. Um, and uh, oh, Stephen, okay, that's a UFC dude. I'm gonna have to go look that up. Cause. Yeah, Forrest Griffin, he's old school. He's a former champ. He retired about three years ago, but he's the reason why I first got into watching UFC. Uh, and Stefan Bonner was there, so you know we took pictures. I even put up a video of me uh, giving. Not every day you get to give a, a former light he heavyweight champion of UFC. Uh, tips on shooting. So we did a Facebook live where I was giving them a rifle one-on-one kind of tip and stuff like that. Uh, but it was it was cool, man. It was real fun. It was real oh, fun. He's got the ears of a fighter. Oh yeah, he's got he's got the cauliflower. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I would definitely say if you guys haven't, if you're not hip to Black Rain Ordinances, that's their logo there. Yeah. All right, go down, go down, and uh, check them out. You can look on all the social medias, Black Rain Ordinance, um, and also hit up their website. But they make some good stuff, man. Their price point. Um, a couple of years ago, I was I was asking them and asking them, and they they uh, I don't think I made them do it, but they did come out with a rifle that's for the everyday man now. Their their spec rifle it starts at eight ninety nine, and sometimes you can catch them cheaper than that because that's MSRP. And then they got you know some stuff that goes up there in the prices, but you get the quality to match. So look them up. You can get a rifle for eight hundred bucks all the way up to whatever you can spend. So 
check them out, look them up. They got their own in-house cans and all kind of products they can help you out with. So where where um, did Black Rain Rifle start again? I think you said that. Uh, they right? started in Neosha, Missouri, and okay. in two thousand nine. Uh, and I was gonna, I was gonna say it. They make some real, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not just blowing smoke. They make some really, really good, solid stuff. Uh, and I, I don't, I, people know them, but they're not as well known as they should be. I don't know the reason why, but um, um, I think uh, Ed Down and Big Daddy Guns. You guys got a couple of Black Rains, don't you? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. there's several. Um, Big Daddy Guns likes Black Rain stuff, so I know that Big Daddy himself, Tony, has uh, quite a few. Cause I'm always I'm always showing off his black rain stuff here. So yeah, I was looking around. I don't think there's I don't think there's any of them here right now. Cause he came and took them. Cause he yeah, saw me he saw me showing them off. He forgot that he had those. Yeah, black and I think he nice. he saw it on one of the shows and he came back and got them. <laughs> yeah, I think because you got he's got that American flag one and yeah, there's a I think he has a he has a, a like a red, blue, and white one, and then a yellow and black one. I want to say. The other yep. one, yeah, but he's there's there's quite a few. All right, so what are you showing us here? This is your black well, this rain. Is, this is the black rain. Now mine's a little because I'm just that kind of guy. It's it's got a few different parts on it, but essentially, by the heart, this is a black rain rifle. So even on my Facebook profile, it's a black rain rifle. You so see it says, "Let it rain." <laughs> Let it rain. You know, let it rain. Let it rain. So I mean, rain and if drop, you're looking for a comfortable top. handguard, man, you really aren't gonna find a better one. The handguards are are very very nice and very very. That's M Lock. Right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Got black rain written all over it. Yeah. It is a yeah. very, very nice. Yeah. The black rain booth at Shot Show always has some cool stuff in it. So. And if you guys are wondering, if guys are wondering, and I don't mean a name drop on here, but if you're wondering, like, oh, who oh, would you really? Do? You don't mean to name drop? Is that? I, look, I'm just saying. You're being facetious. Not really. <laughs> Kind of, sort of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not gonna let you get away with that one. You know you. <laughs> You know you mean to name to name drop. <laughs> if you are going to compare them to somebody's quality, I will put them right up there with DD. Okay. If you had to pick a, if guys are like, well, who can you compare them to? I would, I would pick DD. That's 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 who they're. Okay. That's, well, why why do you say that? Uh, because they they stand true. Their tolerances, like the machinists they have, you have to read their story on the machinists and how they look into it. Uh, but their machinists are very meticulous, if you will. Uh, very meticulous. Everything that they put together. Uh, has to be of the tightest tolerances, and it reminds me so much when you listen to the Daniel Defense story mm -hmm. about how they make sure everything comes out has to stand up to specs, um, about having more control over everything and how the rifles run and perform. So when you look yeah. at some of the platforms they ran them, some of the guys they've had run them, some of the conditions they ran in, coupled with the tolerances that they stand to, um, and the quality they put into it. So yeah, the, all the rifles aren't going to be 700 bucks. Some of them do hit 2,400 bucks, but they're putting a uh, R&D behind them. They're putting uh, the, the quality control behind them and they got them running through the ringer and getting them tested real heavy. And it reminds me a lot of kind of the approach of Daniel defense, like quality first and everything else second. And that's what they that's what they do. OK, I mean, the reason why I ask is because um, I just bought a Daniel defense and I'm going through it. And one of the things I noticed uh, yesterday shooting with Walter is that I'm not trying to knock Daniel defense's quality or anything, but, you know, the um, DDM4 ISR that I have is a retail price on that's like three grand, and then the bolt control group is just a regular mil spec bolt control group. It's not even nibexed or anything like that, you know. Not really. Yeah. So it does, it's have, not a, it's, it does have a it's, can on it though, right? It's not even nitrite coated. Yes, it has a can. It has a can. Oh, um, that's right there, probably. That's probably, that's probably a big chunk of the money, but a, still. Yeah. You know, uh, so I know I'm, I'm just saying to you that I noticed that like it came with just a regular trigger, regular. Um, Someone's got to pay for that big factory they just built. Yeah. So, yeah, they didn't build a new so one. with uh, with um, Black Rain, you know, what did that come with bolt control group wise? Was it just a regular bolt control group or uh, this one is nitrated? Yeah. So I'm just saying I'm just saying that's something that I noticed that's a little. Well, what, what, yeah. what would you expect? Let me ask you that. Well, because I think if you're going to drop that kind of money, you expect a little bit more than just like, like a KE arms kind of thing. Yeah, I mean that's like probably your, you know, you you just pull that that bolt control group out of a bin somewhere, but whatever. <laughs> you know, I would have liked it to have like a nice treatment or something on it, but whatever. I get it. I understand. I mean, from when when I talk to people who are Daniel Defense people, they're like, yeah, you know, it's not 
not knocking the quality of it, but they don't necessarily come in there with uh, upgraded parts. So here's the thing that I think about it. If I buy this gun from you, spend that much money, and then I have to change all those parts, do you, okay. I would prefer they just do a Bones version. Just put out a Bones version so I don't have to go through all of that. So I what's save a little bit of money. What's the most cost-effective, I don't want to say cheapest, what's the most cost-effective DD rifle right now, about 1400 bucks? Um, I don't know. Maybe. That is yeah. that your entry level? I think it's about fourteen hundred bucks. Okay. Oh, yeah, up twelve to fourteen, somewhere up in there. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, you can definitely um, as a, from a pure dollar standpoint, I can definitely get that. Yeah. Like me personally, uh, when, even when you look at, I always get the acronym wrong. It's uh, LMRV. The guys that make the war rifle. The, um, what is that thing? Is it? I know what you're talking about. Um, the war sport. The war sport. What did that thing starts like three grand, right? Yeah. Now this thing that now for people out there, because I know there's some people in the chat complaining about it being three thousand dollars. It's integrally suppressed rifle, but I don't. I still don't think it should be that expensive. You know. So I didn't. I didn't pay that much. Obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. Now your Daniel Defense. I I can't remember now. That has the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, the upper and lower. The upper and the the handguard is their own design where it attaches. Um, it's I, not the standard AR type arrangement. Do you remember? Yeah, that? it is. Yeah. Okay. So you pay extra for that because that's unique. Yeah, and then all the stuff like the stock and a whole bunch of other things have Daniel Defense all over them. But that's why I'm saying to you, if if the barrels, like what a lot of people like about Daniel Defense, <clears throat> as Kevin was yeah. saying, is like the barrels, right? Yeah. And, and, yeah, and they like the tight tolerances. Wouldn't it be better for them to to Make a bones version, and then I could put stuff on there that I want to put on there. Wouldn't that, you know, be and you, more? And you wouldn't end up with their stock and their grip, right? And, and you know, they they got to get rid of that stuff some, somehow. Oh, really? Okay. Well, well, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. I'm just saying it might help. It no, might I'm keep not, some people from getting laid off. Because yes, I understand. Like they just did build a big, a big new building and everything, but then they also laid off some people. So yeah, that's there, that's just what I'm saying. Like, stop know. that, really. Besides a rush. Yeah. Now, 904 Outdoors says spikes is good, but not as good as Black Rain. Yeah. Um, I know that. I got spikes too. I mean, I, I, I'm never. Yeah, but also like Spikes Tactical doesn't actually make their stuff. Someone else yeah, makes it. So. No. Yeah, I, I like Spikes Tactical. I'm just saying to you. A lot, most, who, most, whatever the company is that makes all those things, hey, they're good. <laughs> most you guys are, and then about, somebody slaps their name on it, which, hey, that's all well and good, you know. Speaking of barrels, let me let me let me show you a barrel. You guys ever um ever bought any uh, ER Shaw stuff? I know of it. I know, know of it. Any. Yeah. Uh, the, I don't even know who who is that barrel okay. manufacturer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me show you. Okay, he's going. Okay, let's go. Hey, um, while he's out showing us stuff, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Mark, Wag up, Mark Wagner's post on there that that PPS video that we did and mm -hmm. the videos of that is the highest. Um, um, he's got the highest draw off that he's ever gotten. Yeah, that, it. yeah, that PPS H41 shorty for anyone out there who doesn't know and hasn't seen the uh, social media posts we've been making. It's pretty popular. People like that, Walter. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, you stumbled on something there. Yeah. You I stepped think, on it. I think I'm going to put together an HK, uh, like a G3 shorty now. An HK version? Okay. And it's it's going to be full uh, full, uh, full auto. Yeah, I say do the crazy, man. By the way, I am working on a video for you guys out there on that. So, you know, I mean, but there's a ton of videos. I got a whole bunch yeah. of videos. We shot, like, how many videos did we do, Walter? Do you remember? We did a bunch of things. We had a bunch yeah. of guns. I mean, it was a pile of guns, so. Yeah, um, but some things we were just testing and right. some things right. we were doing videos on. So I do have a video on this bad boy. The yes, people who were asking me if I shot the Maxim 50. So I do have a video on that. You know, it, it, yes, we it's safe. It's safe, people. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> The video on this should be forthcoming. I'm already working on it. Have Did it you clean that? Home. Yeah, we cleaned it yesterday before we left. Oh, that you didn't clean. Oh, it. was I supposed to do more cleaning? Cleaning? What more cleaning? I thought we we put uh we put this the uh the swab the patch thing down through the there. Yeah. yeah, I thought yeah we put the patch through there. Oh, no, that's not enough. enough. What else what did you mean? expect me to do, Walter? <laughs> it's it's not my problem, man. You got it. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Well, I got enough yeah. to clean. I got all my guns that I drug up there. To I'm clean. giving it back to Big Daddy Guns, so no, then they can dip it. I did the cleaning I need to do. 
Okay. So right. hopefully yeah, we didn't shoot it that much, really. We only yeah we put four shots through it. So yeah, yeah, that was yeah. enough. Yeah, that's it's. This is not the. This is not a rapid fire kind of gun. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not this guy either. You know. Yeah. So, the fire breather. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, we got a bunch of questions in here. Lola's not here right now, so I'm going to have to go through all of this to hit up all the questions and stuff like that that people have going. Did you have some guns that you brought in, Walter? Well, I brought, um, just to show, I brought the uh, MPX in with our new soon-to-be ready tail hook adapter for Ooh. the... For the so for the, uh, the tail hook adapter, what is it just waiting on? The coloring? The anodizing? Uh, yeah, it's out to be anodized, yeah. Yep, correct, yeah. So you'll be able to use it with our um, our Sig stock with the tail hook. So those guys that don't want to get us don't want to pay the two hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. you know, but nobody anyway, wants to pay the two hundred bucks. Well, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But yes, it's a shame they just don't make the SBRs go away, and then we don't have to do this. Much yeah, I know, it's totally silly. And uh, well, yeah. but you know, it's just another way for them to get tax money off of us. Yeah, but it's not even that much, really, in the big scheme of things. Um, um, Compared, well, it was a lot of money in 1934, but it's not so much now. So it depends on who you are. I think to some people it is a lot it, of money, yeah, yes. and it's also the principle. I think to a lot of people out but there. But when you start dealing with NFA stuff, it's not. So yeah. So one of the things I could see here, uh, Kevin, I know you got some. You you have something that you want to bring in. Um, someone here in the chat is asking me about like what do I think about Rand CLP and uh, what he said in the Gun Collective stream the other day. So, um, yeah, we kind of covered this last week. I don't know, Kevin, you weren't here, right? No, I wasn't. I was traveling. Yeah. So Rand CLP is one of our sponsors. Okay. And um, I know the, uh, Chris from Rand CLP that was on the Gun Collective thing. And he also was here on a show talking to us. So I think that the Gun Collective was a whole bunch of different people. And if you look at that where maybe he spoke like once or twice, I don't know that he really got a chance to fully get his point across to you guys. If you feel like you want him to come back on here and talk to us again, I could always reach out to him and say, hey, come back on and talk about whatever went down on the on um, the gun collective panel. But he has been on before and spent hours with us talking to us, talking about guns and all that kind of stuff. So you guys can either go back and look at that. I think Lola said it was episode 35. If you want to look at that, but if you're, you know, still not satisfied, then, you know, we can always have him come in and explain himself a little bit better. But that's, you know, that's where I would put that, right? They they do sponsor what we do here. And um, I know that he said some things that people aren't happy about. So well, we can always have we can always have him come in, get on the hot seat and answer those questions to you guys. Yeah. How how does that sound? Sounds like, well, sounds like a plan. Sounds like a wiener. <laughs> Every man's got to be able to, um, you know, you got a lot of people on there talking. It's a lot, and you can't really express your point. I mean, I think only, I would probably say maybe two guys really took up the bulk of the conversation, if you will. So I mean, think if he's willing to come on and talk about it, why not? Yeah, ain't really get much time to go into detail on the show. No, I don't think so. I don't think he got a lot of time and then just maybe the way that comes out. I think from what I see, folks, and and maybe rightly so, you know, if you if you looked at it, if you actually looked at what he said versus, you know, maybe listening, just taking it from Yankee Marshall, if you actually looked at it and to see how that conversation played itself out and then you still feel like you didn't like what he had to say, I understand that, you know. Not my words, though. One thing I could tell you guys is they sponsor – what I do, and they've never told me what to say. So you can take that for whatever you want to take it for. You know, they don't tell me what to say here on this show. They don't tell me what to say, you know, in videos that I do and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, and I'm pretty staunchly Second Amendment. So, but you know, that is that's that's his words, what he said, and the person who really needs to answer for that or explain that if he feels that's necessary is that particular person. So that's yeah. how I think about that. That's that's where I would leave that conversation. All right, Kevin, did you want to show us something? Yeah, so we were talking about uh, the price of AR. So ER Shaw is mm -hmm. a barrel manufacturer. Mm -hmm. and they do all kind of fancy stuff with barrels. So depends on how fancy that people want to start getting with their stuff, even your standard ARs. 
This is one of their barrels. Now yeah. these guys actually make um, they actually make barrels, right? Because I know yeah, there's only a few people that do make these barrels. Okay. They actually make their barrels and they specialize in precision barrels. So here is I don't know how clear that is. Here's one of their diamond cut barrels. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It just okay. Okay. Focus and then it went out because it's hard to see. That's diamond cut, huh? Yep. Okay. That's pretty diamond. sexy. Diamond cut and twist fluted. Yes, and it is. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece of machinery. And uh, what is this now? What caliber is this? Barrel? this is a, uh, ER Cheryl. This one here is the five, uh, the five five six. Mm -hmm. Um, and this puppy, this burl, as you guys start getting into your precision ARs, which I'm doing Did a you build. Just say burl. Burl. I'm from. Look, man. Burl. It's burl. Midwest. It's burl. Burl. Oh, okay. Talk, okay. I'm talking about slang now. <laughs> I, 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 that was just. Slang. I was just checking. I was just confirming that that's the nomenclature of it. Burl. Okay, uh, but go ahead and show us the burl. All right. <laughs> you're looking at um a retail value of eight ninety nine. So, when well, you start Ooh. depending on what you're looking into and what you're getting and what guys are putting into their quality, I mean, you can. It's not hard. Wait, hold, hold, hold on a second. That barrel is eight ninety nine. Yeah, MSRP eight ninety nine. Oh, okay. I guess so. we won't be putting it on the sixteen lower, will we? Yeah, no, we could put it if Kevin will. Yeah, Kevin obviously hasn't even put that on anything. That's just nope. going in a display case. <laughs> hey, you know what? Now I'm I'm not. I was in a. You know, sometimes you're in the right place at the right time. I came okay, across. You got a deal. You got a deal. I got a, I got a deal. Not because I was just a right. Well, one of my buddies is sponsored by them, and so I would happen to be standing there at the right time when something happened, and they blessed me just because of who I was connected to, which is awesome. Sometimes it just matter who your friends are, and that that that's cool. Um. So uh, I grabbed it, but it's so it's so purty. I got to do a build off of it. I, I'm 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 still trying to come up, you know, because it's so beautiful. I was like, should I do a skeletonized F1 hose? Everything it? else that goes on that gun is gonna have to be beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I was. That's why I was like, uh, how can I show it off? I'm like, uh, F1. Good question. Does anybody else make any skeletonized lowers and uppers besides F1? Mm, I, don't I don't know, know if I'm looking to that. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, so it's probably I mean, going to. I've seen the like all the. Um, I didn't even realize it was F one that made all the skeletonized stuff. Yeah, because I got so, a I got a couple of black rain lords sitting up, but those are those those don't don't fit what this is well, to do. Is that any lighter? Is there any special attributes that you get from this being diamond finished? And they did run it down, and mm -hmm. I don't remember any of it. All I remember. <laughs> It's what uh, the dude. I mean, he ran it down. Like as far as um, the the diamond cut, the 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 detail that went into the diamond cut. The flutes are deep and true. Because apparently, now Walter, you might have to correct me on this, but apparently, when a few of the people that do make burrows, some of the burrows, when they flute them, when they're spinning them, they pretty much just hold like a chisel to it and just do generic flutes. They're not really harmonized. I think is the word he used. Oh, they're not done for harmonics. Yeah. There you go. And his are. Yeah, you, you just cut just cut grooves in it and make it look pretty. Yeah. Okay. And where theirs uh, are actually okay. harmonized. So they actually have a purpose in those grooves, not just Yeah. Okay. So the grooves are for um for the sound. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with heat or anything. Well, else you know like when that. a when a when a bullet is fired and it goes down the barrel, the barrel wiggles. Mm -hmm. If you look at a slow mo, um I hate to bring up something, but if you watch the IM the IMI or is it IMI with the glial? When they fire that video they do, you can see the barrel going woo, woo, woo. So that helps fix all that and, and work with that when you do mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When we do slow mos, we see that all the time. Okay, okay, Kevin, if you want if you want to do something with it, send it to us. We'll we'll do something with it. We'll, <laughs> we'll take it off your hands. I mean you know. I bet. You know, so says the guy that's sitting in a big gun store. <laughs> I bet you would find something to do. I never had an eight hundred dollar barrel. Yeah, hey, well, and I looked up on an eight hundred dollar barrel. I would, I would never be able to walk in because I'm not a lone yeah. guy. Like I don't know if I so, would. Walk in. I, so I what is the point you're trying to make? You're trying to say that sometimes it's just the barrel is where all the price is in these things. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, man. When you get into quality, okay. because I, I'll tell you right now that that barrel on that uh, Daniel Defense that I have. Have, it's integrally suppressed, but it's not fluted and diamond finished and encrusted or whatever else you have I, I going totally on there. So the one thing okay. I only only one thing that I, I I fear now I will say this: there's going to be another company that I'm going to buy something from just because they did something really nice. So I'm going to try their stuff out for the first time and see if I like it. And that's Aerial Precision because of the 
I'm a sucker for people to help people. And they did a, a big cancer benefit with blown deadline and gave some stuff away. So I'm going to buy one of their lowers full price just because of that. Um, but I have seen not their stuff, but I've over the years of training, I've seen guys try to, and I'm not saying you got to go spend three grand. I'm not defending the price. I'm just saying when you try to spend 400, I've seen guys get in these classes and think that they're going to, they're going to rock out and I break their gun within 200 rounds. Um, so you got to make sure you're, Finding a sweet middle spot, but I think nowadays, man, with the with the AR market the way it is, you can get a pretty good rifle under a thousand bucks. You know, I think that sweet spot between seven to a thousand, depending on what's going on, especially with shopping season coming up, you get a pretty good rifle. Yeah, man. wait till Black Friday, man. If you're if yeah. you're looking to buy something, hang on till Black Friday. Yeah, I think we're having a Black Friday episode, right? I think we're going to try to do that. We're going to try to have a Black Friday. Well, 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 actually, we have to do that before Black Friday, don't we? Wow. We're gonna have to we well, have to figure that, out the logistics of that episode because how we can't we can't help take, people if by the time we're telling them about the take, deals it's too late. Those deals are already going a lot of places. So yeah. So we okay. So I guess we need to we need to get on this. Like, when is the day after Thanksgiving? Correct. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We're I good. have no idea when the Black Friday is. I should know since I'm a black man. Oh, it got nothing Black to do Friday. with your color, of your skin. Now, come on. Why? Why can't we take something good? Why can't we take something good? You can have Black Friday. It's a good day to buy guns. There you go, man. Okay. Now, I'm really tripping off everybody making fun of my Midwest slang here. Now it's a burl. That's right, what. It, here, what do you call yeah, Kevin? Is a pop or soda? It's a soda. Soda. Okay. Pop is pop is north of us. They say pop. Yeah, is that's soda. Illinois. Illinois, where yeah. I'm from, they call it pop. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, what I was trying to say about like with I, I think that, um, yeah, you can get a decent gun out there. What I just want to know is like I think that sometimes people maybe leverage their name too much and they're not giving you exactly what you think you're getting for your money. I want to see some updated technology when I'm spending anything above a thousand dollars for an AR. There should be okay, some, so I, there should at least be a nice bolt carrier group in there. Run me down. Hanks, fifteen hundred bucks. What does Hank Strange want out of his rifle? Fifteen hundred bucks. Uh, uh, this this is a, this would be a lot of stuff to get into, but um, I would like a nice trigger. Mm -hmm. You know, we talking adjustable. We talking three and a half pound set. What we no, I don't care about like light trigger pull weight to on on all that kind of stuff. But I would like a nice. You know, I don't want your standard mil spec trigger that you just pulled out of the bin and slapped in there and it's all crunchy. Okay. Crunchy. Yeah. So if I go into a store and someone goes, oh, here's a nice AR, right? I take that AR and I pull the charging handle. Okay. If that charging handle feels grainy, gritty or whatever, that's not a good thing. That Daniel defense, that's what happened. So now obviously well, we went through that. We had this whole conversation, I think, right, Walter, about it, the guns not being lubed. And that's a dry, that's dry finish on dry finish. That's, that's yeah. So, but, but still, isn't that something that we all do? It's like, if you go to a, if you go to a car dealership, there's things you do with a car, right? If you're looking at a car, like yeah, you slam yeah. the door, you see how the door sounds, you listen to smells. the stereo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You push the seat, the driver's seat all the way back. See, can you get, can you sit in the back of the driver's seat if it's pushed or if it's set up for you, can you sit back there? You do things like that. So the same thing with us as gun guys. When we go into a gun store and we take an AR-15 off the thing, I know I pull the charging handle. What do you do, Kevin? Uh, the first thing I do is I'll I'll open it up. So I'll, I'm popping those pins and I'm I'm opening it You're up. You're looking in there to see what's in there. Okay, yeah. what about you, Walter? Um, what do you I'd do? Probably kind of I kind of probably just give it an overall look of the finish to start with. Wiggle the upper and the lower, see how they fit. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Do you pull the trigger? Because I, I mean, you have to ask them first. I don't ever. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, obviously, I'm gonna safety check it. That's why I'll usually pull the, the charging handle. But I'll say, hey, do you mind if I try the trigger? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can do that. Yeah, that's that's being, that's being uh, respectful. That's what I say. Yeah. As long as you're being respectful, don't point the don't point the AR at somebody. Right. Don't don't swing around and. <laughs> Yeah. Point everybody in the Point it up story. at the ceiling yeah, or yeah. floor or whatever you're going to do. But so right. I check the tr the trigger and things like that. So if someone – now, we all know what's inside of like a $600 AR, right? That's like your – I mean, nowadays you can get ARs if you catch the right yield. Yeah, for 400 bucks. So yeah. let's say we put it at a $600 AR. If I go pick up a $1,500, $2,000 AR and that charging handle is like gritty and and the trigger is crunchy and all that, I'm like, what the hell, what am I paying for on this thing? 
Are you paying you know for the name? I mean? sometimes, like some sometimes people you are. It's just like um, you know, Chevy, GMC, or Cadillac. Sometimes you are just. Sometimes you're paying for the name. I mean, you know, if you got to have Colt, you might. You know, a lot of people got to have that horse. And Colt don't make their parts either. So, by the way, a lot yeah. of them. So, so I'm just saying, I, I I would prefer to get a little bit more out of it. So, but you know, that's I, just things like the grips and the stocks. That's important. You know, does it does it point well? Does the grip feel good? Yeah. Well, if you're gonna spend that, if you're gonna buy one for six hundred bucks, you don't care about the grip, the pistol. Well, you want right? to get the most you, you don't want to sit around. I, I can't. People buy these guns and then automatically destroy the whole thing and, and rebuild it. And, and buy. Why do you just buy the thousand dollar one if you didn't want it? You know, well, that's why I'm saying to you, like I think a lot of companies would do better if they just sold the bare bones models. I think the draw of the AR-15 is the tinker factor. You can tinker with it and play with it's, it and change it's this. It's like Legos. Get it customized. Yeah, it's the only one you can do it with, really. That's it. Yeah. I would, you know so. what? And, and for the audience, I will I will share a piece of advice. And I'm, I'm actually doing a whole little video about this. Even when it comes to your, to your, since we're talking about rifles right now, never buy a gun for tomorrow. Always buy it for five or 10 years in the future. And here's why. If you're buying something for tomorrow, you are only thinking about what you're going to do with it tomorrow. So it's a ranch gun. I'm just going to take it out. I'm going to plink with it. Now, if you got money, you, you can buy guns all the time. This doesn't apply. I'm talking about the, the average Joe. If you buy because it's a ranch gun today and all you're going to do is go out and plink with it tomorrow, that's fine. But what may you want to do with that gun two years from now that you haven't even really considered yet? What about five years from now? You know, so if you're going to go out and you're going to drop to Walter's point, 600 bucks on something that you're just going to strip apart. Well, you might as well go ahead and spend a few extra months or whatever and get that eleven hundred dollar rifle because it's going to have everything you need. Because if you if you buy it for tomorrow and yet three and a half years later, you want to come do some kind of heavy training class with it. You want to go through no other choice or now you want to go through Thunder Ranch or you want to go to Reed Hendricks or whomever you go. And these guys are pushing your limits and your gun can't hold up while well, you're doing is buying parts and probably replacing the gun anywhere, stripping it down and rebuilding it. So try to think in the future. Don't think for tomorrow. Think about what I want this thing to do outside of my normal scope. That way your rifle can always outperform your expectations or at worst 10 years in the future, meet them. So try not to buy just for what you need tomorrow. That's that, yeah. that, that would be the best advice I can give. Right. And that's why I'm saying to you, if you are thinking about that, one of the things is going to be like, if, if you just have a regular, like if you have a, just your standard bolt carrier group in there, right? And it's not treated or anything like that. That means you're going to be cleaning that thing all the time. Yeah. You're going to be doing a lot of cleaning and everything. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. You know, um, I just think that, uh, you know, I would prefer something that's treated a little bit because that would give me a little bit more time before I have to get in there and clean it. And I noticed, for example, with that 300 blackout yesterday, it was pretty, I mean, I think, I don't know if we put 500, I don't think we put 500 rounds through it yesterday walter i don't think so no. I, I don't think we even got over 250 rounds you didn't shoot and, all my uh my gem tech so you didn't shoot 500 rounds no i think i put like 60 rounds of your gem tech yeah. through there maybe you know 120 or yeah. more rounds than that of something else right and so so the thing about that for me is like i i already had to clean it when i looked in there i was like wow this thing's dirty well it's, now it's obviously kind of, it's suppressed and right. all of that so they're nasty yeah. So I did, and I did clean it. It's just I'm, I'm already. That makes me in my brain go, "Oh yeah, I'm probably gonna change this." Well, yeah. well but what are you gonna? Do? It's gonna, regardless whether you have the most, world's badass coating in there, it's still gonna get dirty. It'll just be easier to clean up. It'll be easier to clean, and maybe I, maybe I'll be able to push it a little further. As long as you're I'm not shooting to. corrosive ammunition. Yeah. Cleaning is, you know. Well, like Kevin just said, if you're buying something and you're spending this money, then you have to ask yourself, what are you getting it for? And if you're, why would you rationalize spending all that money? You're like, oh, well, if, if, if everything hit the fan or whatever, this is the thing I'm going to go with, right? You're not going to drop money on something like that to go, oh, that's the one I'm leaving behind. <laughs> I doubt it. I'm just saying that's not what you're going to be leaving behind. So just yeah. think about, just think about that. That's, you know, Okay. So I we could we could talk I about this we, forever. I think Elsie's bleeding. Yeah, we can talk about this forever. By the way, um, Rod Mills says that Yankee Marshall said he wants to be on this show. Okay, well Lola has asked him many many times over. So have I. So yeah, if you guys know Yankee Marshall better than I do, I, he's welcome to come on the show. By the way, 
I'd be happy to talk to him and all that kind of stuff. I think that uh, Yankee Marshall is making some some points. Um, and I, I don't have any issues with him coming on the show. We've reached out to him many times and he hasn't come on so so far. So, you know, we'll see what's going on with that. Now, let me see. I don't know what other things out there people are asking about. Let's see. Um, we did get asked one question about uh, how, how do we feel about um, uh, Iraq veteran 88, 88's uh, price guide. Okay. Uh, what was that question? Do you know? It was further back in. It's basically like, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about them charging money, essentially? Um, okay. <clears throat> me personally, I'm sorry. I just had my son come and go something at me. So this is my list? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you leaving tonight? No, sir. Okay, cool. We'll talk in a minute. Okay. All right. So um, I, I personally feel like this. Um, if you go back, and, and Hank said it a couple of times, you have to make sure that you watch the entire video or at least listen to the entire video uh, and I will highly recommend doing it at least once before you listen to Yankee Marshall. Not because I necessarily disagree with everything Yankee said, but it does provide context if you go listen to it first where you can make your own decision. Uh, but in general, uh, from what I remember hearing, and I listened to it, I was on the road, so I was able to listen to it twice. Eric said he doesn't, it, the Iraq veteran 8888 stated they don't take money from the NRA. That's what he said. He, he said that pretty, pretty loud and clear. Mm -hmm. He never said he didn't ex he didn't have any kind of financial business that I remember hearing. So when the price guy came out uh, about how much he charges companies to do things, really, as long as he's still giving his honest opinion, I think that is the American way. You know, I don't let somebody buy your opinion off. But if they're willing to pay you to do a, you know, this this camera stuff, man, and I, I only got baby stuff compared to what some of these guys have. And this stuff is not cheap. Running these channels is not cheap. It's 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 really not. Uh, you talk on ammo, guns, time, help, editing. This stuff is costly. So for a business to have to pay a guy four thousand dollars to spend whatever amount of time to do a quality uh, promotion of their product is pennies compared to what magazines and uh, yeah. big broadcasting stations and you know uh, advertising companies charge. So if I'm a company and these guys over here at whatever, whatever ABC promotions want $25,000 for a 30 second spot, which is about what it costs. And you want $4,000 and you're going to do a 30 minute video about my stuff. That's going to reach three plus million people. I really don't see a problem with that. As long as you're not telling me to buy this gun and it rocks when you really know it sucks. As long as we don't have that, that conflict, I don't, I think it's a, it's a great way to make a rep, make a living. I don't see a problem. Yeah, Walter, did you want to add to that before no, I uh, no, I don't I agree with Kevin on if hey, you know, nobody's twisting your leg to do it. Um, um advertising other mediums are expensive, I know. And it doesn't work all the time or at all. Um, um always remember though, three million viewers doesn't mean there's three million buyers. Okay. That's true. So, you know, when the guy in France is watching or the guy in England's watching or in the or in the hut in Namibia. Um, I'm going to equate the, but nevertheless, you're getting that, you're getting your name out in front of those people. So it's, I guess it's all good. So yeah, I haven't done it yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I think about it? I think even if you listen to Yankee Marshall, he says he doesn't have a problem with that, right? This is a whole entire industry. And I don't have a problem with it. They can ask whatever they want. It's kind of yeah. like an, it's like an athlete. If he if he says, "Hey, I need twenty million dollars," and you pay it, good for you, good for him. Yeah, I, I believe in freedom. So if you believe in freedom, I mean, it's a real you know, thing. You want a hundred grand Everyone's for your, free. You want to try to sell your truck you just bought for twenty for a hundred, and some guy gives you a hundred, take it, baby. <laughs> you know, you're not you're not twisting his arm. Huh. Yeah, if you say that you believe in freedom, if you say that you believe in um, capitalism and all that kind of stuff, then you can't turn around and say that people can't do what they want to do because they can do what they want to do. Huh. And I think if you listen to Yankee Marshall, what he's saying, he says he doesn't have any problem with that. I think where he where he has an issue with it, I, I think in this case, he's kind of using that as as like that's a stone that he could throw at the IB 8888 guys, right? So he's just taking that stone and throwing it because they're going in this back and forward thing. Right. Um, maybe he came to the point where he feels like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, shit just got real. <laughs> 
kind of a thing. So I'm going to show you guys and put this thing out there. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that. What I personally believe, and I think even what he's saying, is that if you do something, if you're disclosing that to people, then it's all good. But does that mean that people have to disclose everything to you? I don't know. I personally believe in disclosing everything to folks out there, and that's what I do. So when we do videos, we put in the front of the video, we, we have a, several people that sponsor us, including Walter. So if you look at my videos, you'll see that there's like three or four different openings that rotate through the normal videos, right? And it, it it's, has to do with someone who sponsors us. So say, okay, we're sponsored by Safety Harbor Firearms or RAND CLP or whoever it is, right? We say that. And then at the end of the video, there's an end card that says, these people sponsor this channel. If you look in the description of the video, it says, these people sponsor the channel. If I'm talking to you, like in this conversation, someone asked about RAND CLP and I said, guess what? They sponsor me. People send me messages and they say, what do you think about the SHTF 50? The first thing I'm going to say is, well, Safety Harbor sponsors me. Mm -hmm. So well, just take, you know that, Here, take here's that with a grain of salt if you want to know what I think about something. And, you know, and the thing is, like Lola's saying it here in the background, that I've gotten flack from people about that for a long time. I mean, even like from other people that do what I do, they're like, well, why are you telling people, all these things that you do. But you see, that's what I believe. I believe in letting you guys- They don't have to do that if they don't want to. Yeah, but, but other people don't have to do that. Right. The, the, but what happens though, is if you make the decision that you don't want to put that out there, and for whatever idea. reason, I'm not saying it's a bad, nefarious reason, you just might not want to do that, right? Um, if you decide not to put that out there, then someone pulls away the curtain, you know, like in The Wizard of Oz, when-, <laughs> when And there's a saying, little guy there. Yeah, pay no attention to that guy behind the curtain. If yeah. someone pulls the curtain on you, you also have to be willing to deal with that. And I, the reason why I do it is because I don't believe that anything like stays hidden. You know, everything will see the light of day. Everything will find its way to, to the truth of what things really are. So I always put things out there as much as I possibly can, right? And let people know what's going on. Um, so to... I don't know if I can bring that point home. What I think is that this, I've told you guys this over and over again, that a lot of what's happening in our world is like wrestling. It's like WWF or E or whatever the hell it is now. And you, you have to be the grown up. When I first came to America, I would get in fights all the time because I told people, hey, this wrestling thing's not real. And then they'll kick my ass. Because, you know, uh, even th and, and I'm sure they knew it wasn't real, but they didn't want me to tell them that it wasn't real. You so ruined their, your dream, man. Yeah, this is one of the weird things that that's happened to me so many times in life. I could tell you guys stories over and over again where there were people and I try to help them out and tell them, OK, this is what's going on. Some people don't like it's the red pill and the blue pill. Some people want to live in that dream. They want that fantasy. They don't want that to be broken. So I'm not knocking anyone else for what they do. But if you're a grown up and you're watching videos on YouTube and you're thinking to yourself that this is all innocent and everything you see is real and we all love each other and we all get along and whatever, then you, <laughs> you are go living some, in a fantasy world. You need to go watch some wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, this, is an, this is another thing from Lola. She says, um, it's like high school. There are cliques. And then the people who have and the people who have not, and there's the nerds and the jocks. Yep. You know, there's the dude who's rich, and he, you know, he, he his father owns a dealership, a car dealership or something. And, and then there's a guy, a brand that, new car. and there's a guy that gets along with everybody. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that's how a lot of this goes. And um, personally, I don't believe in putting people's dirty laundry out there. Um, you know, that that ha to me, that's a thing like you're really, really getting drastic when you do that, you know, and it, and I feel like at this point, Yankee Marshall, just like, you know, he, he said, OK, that's it. You know, the gloves are coming off. Was and that, his hail, that was his Hail Mary pass. Yeah, I'm going to start I'm going to start airing people's dirty laundry and all that. You know, and what comes around goes around with that stuff, too. You got to be careful. Yeah. And so now that's going to become a whole thing. I mean, I saw that I knew that people were going to be asking me about this because people were already asking me about it before I came on air. So I looked at it and I saw that he changed his video because he was threatened uh, with being sued. 
you know, yeah. come on, like, what stage are we at right now? Like, there's other people to fight. There's other, we are surrounded. We're like on an island, regardless of who's the big shot, who makes all the money, you know, who doesn't make any money. Like, we are on an island of, we're gun guys. We believe in guns. We want guns. We want to have access to guns now and in the future. Right. So mm -hmm. we're on this island. We are surrounded with everyone else trying to kick our asses. At some point, we have to just say, OK, you know, we had our little scuffles. Let's put it aside and move on because for the common cause. Yeah. I mean, and I don't know, like, Kevin, you're you're kind of new to this. Did any of this, did anything that's come out, has any of this shocked you? No. See, I, I look at things, you know, like I said, before I decided to do, get into the whole social media of the things uh, roughly about a year ago or whatever it was, um, I was still around it. I wasn't so much dealing with the personalities and stuff like that. But it's it's no different to me than, than the world of law enforcement. It's everybody wants to be the big guy and the big guy is always getting attacked. Right. And then as soon as you get the big guy's job, you become attacked. You try to defend it. It's a revolving cycle. It's it truly is high school. One of the first conversations me and you had. He was like, this is going to be like high school all over again, dude. You know, it's one of the first conversations me and you had. And so although I hadn't seen it, when I saw it, I was like, oh, hey, he was right. And B, yes, yeah, just like high school. It reminds me of working back at the PD. I don't I don't like it, you know, necessarily. And I'm a, I'm a big fan, just like when I got called out about how, how come you aren't calling out the NRA for what they said. Here's my thing. If you are friends with a guy. You can say something I flat out disagree with, but I'm not going to make a video or outwardly attack you. I'm going to call you. I'm going to say, hey, what's up, dude? What, why why you say that? What's up? What's going on? Mm -hmm. And I think his friends or people that you respect deserve that kind of conversation. That's what grown people do. They say, hey, man, people are asking me. I just want to get your word on it. How are you feeling? Um, so even when he came out, Yankee came out here, he went at um, Iraq Veteran. It's like, to me, they're making a living, man. He's, he's in a small town in Georgia. He's, he's trying to make a living. He does put out a lot of content. He found a way to make it lucrative for him. If he's, I don't even know if the four grand is enough for him to truly turn a profit because I don't know what he's spending on his camera equipment and cameraman. I don't know. So I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I yeah, do. But, think I mean, if we're, if we're watching their videos, if, if we're watching their videos and we see the level of production and all that kind of stuff that obviously goes into their videos, right? Right. How the hell do you, you know, that that all of that costs something. So th this is one thing that we have to factor in. And yes, if someone's doing this full time and if there's a bunch of people involved in this, they're a whole crew. Yeah. You know, how do you think that happens? How do you think that happens as a whole crew? And I know like the people gun have to get paid. Guy, people have to be able to pay their bills. I know the gun collective guy does a lot of his high speed camera work. I remember that from a little while ago. So I'm pretty sure there was some there is some work out there. I mean, I don't have a problem with anybody making a book. And I, I, you know, I tell people all the time, like for, for companies that are given product, it's not necessarily all the time a guy being bought off. If Rand, I'm just using them for an example because they brought up if Rand COP says I'm going to give Hank, um, I don't know, that'd be a hell of a lot of cleaner. But let's say a thousand bucks in cleaning and cleaning supplies and boar snakes and all kind of crap. Here's a thousand bucks, Hank. All right. If Hank gets on here and tells you that these are the best things ever and he knows every damn time he pulls the, the, the boar snake through the burrow, it shreds into pieces. All right. We got a damn problem, Hank. You shouldn't be lying to me. I just went out and spent 30 bucks on this thing. But I'm not going to knock you or anybody else that says, oh, great. You're giving me something that's going to help me continue to do this. A, you must believe in me. B, you, you're, you're in business. You want your product to be seen. We can't get upset about that because there were a lot of people saying, I want to only support channels that aren't taking money from anybody or aren't taking products from anybody. Dude, that is unrealistic. Even for everybody had to start somewhere. So for small guys like me, yeah, I'm out doing all this community stuff. Where do you think I get the support from? Yeah. But also, if you don't, if, if that's what you say you want to do, you are free to do that. Then I mean, you need to make sure you're doing the research and, and, and figuring out what you're getting into. I think everyone has to be able to look at themselves in the mirror and live with what they do. For example, you're asking about, you know, your your. Uh, you brought up Ran COP. Before we started dealing with them, we put them through the ringer. All of that stuff, there's videos. There's videos of them. They were like, you know, hey, we want you to check this stuff out. You know, we think it's pretty good. And I'm like, hey, come to the Hacienda and show me this stuff. Then there's then you'll see them coming down and they're showing me things and we're asking them questions and mm -hmm. we tested it out. 
And um, I, I asked Walter to test it out and tell me what he thinks about it. Babyface, I told him, listen, guys, I'm not going to deal with these guys if this thing's no good. Tell me what you really think about it. We went through all of that. Ultimately, I have to face, I face people every day. People see me every day, right? I don't just go to SHOT Show or go to the NRA show. I actually go out there and people see me. People see me in the store. They see me in the street or wherever. And if something's terrible, like you just said, if if I was putting the boar snake through there and it was shredding it, and they would see me and go, hey, man, what's up with that? What's up with that thing? Yeah. And so I'm the person who has to live with that. However, the way that I live with what I do is, you know, I tr I always try to telegraph that to people and what I do. And, you know? and that's, that's all you can do. But, yeah. but, I, but I don't think everyone else has to do that, you know, because I know sometimes that kind of like ruins the mystery. <laughs> You know, it's like if you if you like this girl, but she has a push up bra, do you necessarily <laughs> want to know that? <laughs> you know, well, when it comes down to it, you might find out. Yeah, well, you you know, but if, if you really knew all the things that any woman that you think you're attractive to, if you really knew what the stars that you see in movies, that you think, oh, my God, they're so sexy. They're so good looking. That's just a movie. There's people who put makeup on them and edit it and retouch it. Yeah, they yeah they retouch the film and they yeah. they put special lighting. If you see that chick in in, in real life in person without Stretch all marks. that makeup and clothes on and everything, that's just a regular chick. I tell you one thing. We are going to get um, a little testy on here. I'm gonna I'm thinking about suing the program. Suing what? The program. Yep, I'm suing the program. program. Look, what? look. Uh, there is a no bullying campaign going on in America right now, real strong. No, nope. people keep making fun of my slang, and it's because Hank started it. Oh so my gosh! No, I got. Oh, don't make Kevin mad with his burls. Don't put the boar snake. You know, making fun of my slang, man. We're gonna have to cut it out. <laughs> I'm gonna start a lawsuit. You know, but well, from first of all, we, we didn't tell you to say burl. <laughs> you said burl. You came on the show at a public forum. Hey, look, said burl. Look here. Now, dang it! Now we, we do stuff <laughs> with our R's here, right? We gotta get, it. We gotta get used to our R's in the Midwest. All right, guys, go easy on Kevin. He can't yeah. handle it. I know he looks all big and tough. The truth you know, of the matter is, say, poor little Kevin Pooh could not handle. It's all your burrow holes. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna shove something up your barrel. <laughs> yeah. Do you really think, Kevin, that by complaining, these guys are gonna? They're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, we feel uh, sorry for Kevin now. We'll just uh, back off." Hey. Now I'm gonna start reading all the comments. Should I start oh, reading man. the comments about your barrel? Hey, Kevin, go, go have a steak. Hey, Hank, I was told to ask you to say Camaro. 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 <laughs> Tomorrow, oh, yeah. What's tomorrow. wrong? Tomorrow, uh, you do you slang your on that word too, and like the way you yeah. say against. Like I don't know what all that is. Yeah. But uh, listen, when I came to America, I had a British accent, so I'm not. I I there's no shame in my game. You can make fun of my accent, whatever you want. Now, there is a thing. Katie's burls are big. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> People make fun of uh, things with me all the time. Do you see this crazy? Pants, you do you see this it. crazy ass mohawk on my head? Can I just? Did somebody really just call me Kevy Pooh? <laughs> that was my oh, fault. Oh, was my fault. You, oh. you didn't hear me call you that? Uh, you call me. I, I try to ignore you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so, so let me, okay. So let me give you a little secret about this, Kevin. If people are saying stuff in the chat and you start complaining about it, that's not going to minimize the number of comments in the chat. I know. I thought they were going to be my friends. No, that's not how gun guys get down. Now gun guys, it's like when you're getting, um, you know, when you're getting, when people are making fun of you in like school or whatever, man, if you show that you're upset about that, it's going to come on strong. Oh yeah. They just, they, and they got me too. Woo. Yeah. So <laughs> there, there's a, you know what, from that, um, from that talk though, while I try to hold my tears <laughs> from that, from, that, from the what? That whole two hour conversation. I don't remember the guy's name. I, I don't know. I don't want to say somebody's name because then it might be a guy that works for another company and people get. Oh, what are you talking? You're talking about this round. Back to the to the round table thing. There actually okay. I only have two big points about that that table. One, I understand, but I at the same time completely disagree with the dude that was like morality the the, the, the morality of men. I get his point, saying that human beings can be evil. You know, the guy that was basically like, we need to come to the table and do something and mm -hmm. and talk to the other side and see what we can do. Okay. No. No, 
Um, I think we have conversations every day. I also don't a hundred, a thousand percent. I'm definitely, I'm not giving you another inch. If anything, we should be going to get more rights back. I'm not about giving anything up. I'm not. Well, let, but let me ask you this, Kevin. Um, if something unfortunately happened to you, mm -hmm. what can we, like, regardless of what it was, whether you were in a car accident or someone did something horrible to you or whatever happened, right? Mm -hmm. What can we say to your family to talk them down off of that? To make them feel better, we can't. We can't say anything. What can we do to make them feel better? We can't do anything. Can't even do anything. if you, even if you take away cars because it was a bad car accident, they're okay. Thank you. And then the next day they're going to be like, well, not, this sucks too. Or what about this? Now I'll take the streets away. You know, it, you you can never yeah. get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Right? The, the thing that we have to learn is that this is the world that we live in. We are we create this world. We we are human beings, and and because we exist in this world not we're not all the same right we're not all the same yeah. we're not all equal some of us are broken and they're broken individuals in the world and they do bad horrible things and there's really no law that that we can do there's no inanimate object that we could ban that would change that that's yeah, the I first thing that we all have to learn how to accept i know it's terrible if it happened to me there's nothing that you could do to make me feel better about it i mean if you get run you know, over by a chevy is it chevy's fault yeah. So somebody, now you're gonna, somebody was driving that thing, you know, I mean, you know. yeah. So, well, that's, that's the thing. Family. And you're going to punish people for that now. So everyone else has to suffer. The guy, the guy, suffer. the guy offed himself. So there's no way to, to put out in front of everybody and say, Oh, bad guy, bad guy. So uh, it looks like Tyron just told me the guy's name was Clint. Okay. So the guy's name was Clint and it, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's to me, he was, he was doing more harm than good than sharing his opinion on a platform that probably got a, a lot of views. I know they said they had like 1,700 people live watching or whatever, but those little sound bites oh, yeah. probably are going to show up in some political campaign somewhere. Well, I think that guy probably needs to look. That guy was probably, um, that was probably a call for help for that guy, I think, in my opinion. I'm not trying to like, um, I'm not trying to sympathize with him, but I, I empathize that maybe that guy is indicating that he has some issues. You know, and he maybe needs help. You know what I'm saying? I heard him say that he that he feels like because I think he sells guns. I don't know who that is, yeah, he but I, but you know, if he sells guns and he feels like he's taking blood money, dude, nobody's forcing you to do this. Sell that company, get the hell out. Yeah, don't do it. You, you know, that's my advice to you it. if you feel that's what you're doing. But you know, I don't feel that way. So, you know. But if but if he feels that way, then I think he should absolutely, you know, do something about it. So and that was that. And then the only other thing besides that guy, because, yeah, he was uh, I know he I know him and Tim over at Mac are friends. But I think he, he definitely lit a fire up under. Um, no, it was not Clint from Thunder Ranch. See, that's why I was scared. No, not Clint from Thunder Ranch, guys. Um, but um, the other thing and I know he threw this together at the last moment. So I'm not like picking on him because he kept he made that clear. This is the last minute thing. But they spoke a decent amount about about diversity and they kept saying about how everybody thinks it's an old bunch of white guys pheasant hunting and the nra and blah 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 and they brought up diversity uh -huh. diversity a little bit in thought and a lot in age i'm like i hope they don't think that's the limit of diversity because they kept saying it would change things totally if you know if they got younger blood in there we got to be more diverse not a bunch of old white guys pheasant hunts okay so it's a, a bunch of 40 year old white dudes on youtube like we <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I, the, I think the point that you're making here is they were saying that um, they were discussing diversity. I think they knocked the NRA and stuff like that for not being up to what the new gun owner is and et cetera. And um, this is feedback that obviously you're giving. Uh, I think I would agree with what you're saying. And I also got feedback from other people that, yeah, how can you talk about diversity and then your panel is all white dudes? All white dudes. And There's no dudes. women. <laughs> There's no well, Latinos. No black people. Guy, no, when, when, yeah. When, so, but their idea of diversity is like, oh, well, we're, you know. And then, and then they're like, oh, and but when we went to the NRA show, people were shocked when we saw we showed the people in the background. It's like, yeah, um, yeah, but and I know he threw it together last minute, so I'm not picking on him. I'm just saying, well, you can't be that closed-minded because even the one minority they brought up was Coleon, and it was kind of in a negative way, right? So you didn't give, like, if you're going to talk about something and say you're going to be diverse, focus on more than the old pheasant hunting white dude. Um, now, okay, so they did bring, they brought up Colin Noir, but what they brought up. They, I, they, it, was, it was kind of a negative, they didn't bash him, but it was a negative. No, they did, yeah, they, they didn't bash him, but 
Um, they call them the shield at the NRA, you know, a paid shield. So, um, well, what and what they said, I think, is that he, you know, Colin, they're saying that he does not work directly for the NRA. He works for a publicity firm that works for the NRA, right? Not that, yeah, because so, they kept saying marketing firm, yeah. Yeah, or a marketing firm or whatever. And if that's, you know, that's probably true. I don't know if it definitely is true. Um, I think this kind of, I think there is some irony in their, in their discussions about that. Not to say that they can't say that about Colin Noir, because they absolutely can. And I don't disagree with, with what they said. I think that it's just kind of ironic that you're saying that. And then they didn't, they clearly didn't really make an attempt to diversify the panel. And, and and that's to the point that I think um, Yankee Marshall was making, right? Because they didn't even invite him on. He's a he's a Democrat, right? He's a he's a very he's a liberal gun owner. He would like even though he would have been another white dude, <laughs> you know. I mean, they well, they, they could have made some kind of attempt, I, you know. But here's the thing: I have to say to you, just like I said in the beginning about freedom, they are free to do what they want. That was their party. Yeah, it was their party. They are free to do what they want. Either they don't know any, they don't really know anyone that's diverse, or no one was available that was diverse to them, or they didn't care to. And that's that's and, why I'm saying that I'm not coming down on them for anything. I know it was last minute. He didn't have a time to do a lot of research, so I'm not mad at him about it. I'm just yeah. saying when you, so I'm not saying they can't come back and do a round. Well, yeah. So here's American Gun Chick is in the chat and she said it's funny because, you know, they were thinking the same exact thing. And that's the thing everyone's going to think when you put your things out there and you're trying to say this, you know, maybe it wasn't fully thought through. But people are going to look at it and say that, like, well, where's where's the women on this panel? Where's the gay person on this panel? Where's the this thing or that thing? Not that you have to do it, but yeah, don't. And then, and then sometimes you know. that gets false, too. Be quite honest with you. Mm -hmm. when you. When you bring people in just to have a token. So to speak, and they're not really part of the. I, I, if it's what, not gen, I mean, I agree with what you're saying. Genuine. It's not genuine. Yeah, if just it's not genuine, there, just to have them sit there and go. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? For example, Walter would be our token, right? Yeah. Like, I'm, 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 I'm the cream of the Oreo. Come on, man. <laughs> well, look, but, but that's if people don't know any better. Walter's not the token. He he's actually my friend. He's. I'm just sitting here listening because I. I'm just listening because I that's yeah. what I would have done on that panel for the most part, because I know if you open your mouth too much up, there's nothing you're going to say that's right. Nothing. Yeah, but I don't think it's about trying to say what's right. I think ultimately, if you said what you felt, you know, at, you're never going to please everybody. Yeah. So. And then people choose to translate that in any way. And it doesn't make the people wrong. Doesn't make you wrong. If that's, that's what you feel. That's well, what I said. That feel. was their party. You know, if you want to have a party like that, then. But yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the. Uh, it, it, to, to, to each point, everybody's going to have their own friends, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I am, I am not ashamed and, and proud to say that I consider Coley on a friend. He's a good dude. All right. I've, I've had dinner with this guy several times. We've text, we've talked, we've chatted. I think he's a great guy. They want to throw something, you know, it wasn't like they, they talked about the guy's family or anything like that. But if anybody doesn't, anybody dislikes him or what he does because of the mo of the way he does it, that's fine. It's your opinion. I personally think he's great, not only for the gun community, but I think he's a great influencer. I think yeah. he's a great representation about what you can be. Um, I, I think the guy set laid a, a, a groundwork for what you can be. So I'm not in that. That was the only time they brought up anything diverse. And I'm not going to jump their stuff because they had some negative say. Yeah. But, but OK, so let's talk about that for a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that when we were discussing Colin Noir, we could go back or when we when this whole thing happened with the NRA. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure I came down on the NRA, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned that Colin Noir was just going along with the flow. So the thing is, is yes, I agree with what you just said, Kevin. He's a, he's a good guy. I like him. He's magnetic. I think they made a, a good choice in putting Colin Noir uh, or giving him that opportunity and putting him into that position. That position, though, is limiting. And um, I myself was a little bit disappointed that Colin Noir didn't turn to the NRA because he has their ear. Everyone's talking about who has the NRA's ear and all that type of shit. I'll tell you what I honestly think about this. What makes you think that some dudes have the NRA's ear because they go sit down at dinner with um, Wayne LaPierre? That's bullshit. If you sit down at dinner with a dude one time, what does that? What the hell does that mean? He don't know you from... Yeah, yeah, you're just you you're just some guy it. who went and sat down to dinner with him. But yeah. but the person who actually does know these these NRA people is Colin Noir. And he could have come to them and said, look, guys, 
what you're saying here is no. wrong. I don't think you're fully thinking this through and seeing how people are gonna take what you're saying and maybe you're making a mistake. He didn't come out and say that. What, what Colin Noir came out and said is that, oh, at the beginning, I didn't understand what they're doing, but then I realized they're playing like 3D chess and they're way yeah, ahead of they're this. They're trying to do this yeah. negotiating. Right, uh, even the NRA has backed thing. off what they said. Yeah. Even they have backed off what they said. And at this point, Colin Noir is still doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on that they're geniuses or whatever. Right. And he's not the only one for that matter. Uh, Jaeger. Jaeger made a video saying how he's a, some kind of super genius because <laughs> he could see the nonsense that the that the NRA is doing. And he sees it as being some kind of like, you know, fourth dimensional next, you know, next level move and all that type of stuff. And I think ultimately people have to be able to face up to one when they're wrong and not double down on that. And two, you know, you have to really be able to go to people and say, look, this thing that you're doing here, this is what I think about it. Th right, this is, right. you know, even if even if you can't say it publicly, maybe you don't say anything well, and then you go to them and you say something or the reality of the of the whole matter is that he does agree with everything that they're saying. Mm -hmm. And and but what I'm telling you is I 100 percent disagree with Colin Noir's point. Or, or stance on this particular subject of that statement that the NRA made. They made the wrong statement. They didn't. Okay? I, they I opened don't think the door they, I to don't, negotiations. I think I would have sat back a little bit and see what the reaction to stuff was first before I made this, you know, like we're going we're gonna to trade for this, for that. Well, in the history, you know, I do look at history. Nobody's ever traded tit for tat with the Democrats. It don't work that way. No, they not, want it all, man. They want not on, the not on guns, not on anything with firearms. They don't yeah. trade nothing. Yeah. So, so don't, even, don't, tidy. Even, don't start that conversation. Don't open yourself up to that suggestion or that idea. Now look, they're open to they're open to sell their membership out. By now, we've gone through too many things that we know better than this. Yeah. So by yeah. now, we should not do this. Um, Tidy T just donated ten bucks to us. He says uh, Yankee Marshall talks a lot of shit. But what do you think about hashtag 2A, um, 2A rally 2017, never enough ammo is working to develop. Would you attend one in your area? Okay, so this is the first time I'm hearing about that. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I would have to dig into it and all that kind of stuff. But absolutely, anything that lets people out there know that we're not going backwards on the Second Amendment uh, you know, hey, if I look into it and I think it's cool, it's kosher, and I'm okay with the with you know with the message and who's behind it, then yeah, why not? Uh, Walter, I think you're muted. Right. A lot of times these gatherings turn into a freak show, so um, yeah. just be careful. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm saying we have to you know look into it. Go ahead. What were you going to say, Kevin? Crowds make me nervous. They naturally do. But <laughs> all, kind, all, kinds, all kinds of flags pop up, and it's like, oh, look at the white nationalists. They were at the, they were at the Second Amendment thing. It's like, oh God, here it goes again. You know, it's like those people. People nowadays, man, at, at stuff that's coming up. I don't know. I kind of, I try to stay away from that, that kind of stuff. I'm not saying it's not a great point. In no, no. I mean, if you had a march, could you have in a march where you well circled the White House? Um, and, and people just showed up. It was like a, a flash mob kind of thing, maybe to get the point across. Of course, all peaceful, of course. Um, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I think where we need to start is definitely, you know, keep speaking to our representatives out there. Keep trying to speak to the White House and let them know. I think at this point, um, everything's been stalled, right? Uh, there was... Um, yeah. There's news right now, like GOP, this is a headline in the Chicago Tribune. GOP leaders say no action will be taken on gun legislation. Now, I'm not, I'm not go gonna, ahead. I'm not gonna, I remember whatever I say all the time, time's on our side. Every day that goes by is another day, nothing's gonna happen, so. Yeah, well, and that's a two-way thing, right? They're, they're not gonna do anything about taking suppressors off the NFA. But that's not a and subject. Also, this is not yeah. that subject. Don't right. don't confuse those two. This no, they've put everything on hold. No, they've put everything. Right. On well, hold. they're gonna let everything just whoo, yeah go back down. Right. Well, I'm just that's experience. I'm just telling you. I've seen it before. So mm -hmm. you know, and you gotta be you gotta be mindful of watch what's going on, but don't get all you know. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> No, don't pull a gasket over it. That's what I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. No, no, no. So you know what? Now, now, see, this is going to get, um, I don't want this to get social media famous. 
-hmm. But now American gun chick is saying, hey, Kev, next time we're in town, dinner on us. I'm a stinking Cracker Barrel. Look. <laughs> What's wrong with do, do, do you want I've avoided reading all the lists of stuff that people are saying in the in the chat, including Walter. Oh, oh. I didn't say that. Wait, hold on, Walter. You're saying you didn't say anything? Because I hope oh. you know this is I know I know that you know that this is all on the uh not bad. I didn't say nothing bad. Okay. I've been, I've been good. No, didn't you make a, a, a reference to Burroughs? Hold on. No, I did not. You did it. Walter is normally my only friend. I didn't. I oh, didn't have to. Oh, I, I okay. didn't have to. Everybody else Hank, was. <laughs> he jumps right in. Hank's like, yeah, yeah. I feel like making fun of somebody. What's Kev doing tonight? Hey, listen. It goes all around. People make fun of me. I make. Hey, fun I'm of just them. sitting there watching YouTube go. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, gonna, I see. G Webs. G Webs was in the hangout. Is or is in the hangout. Gun websites is in the hangout. Yeah, as, long um, as, I'm not the, as long as I'm not the focus of the. Oh, the I'm scrolling back. I'm going to get the evidence on you, Walter. Oh, okay. I'm scrolling back. You better start. Okay. Walt, uh, Safety Harbor Firearms. What did I say? A and A Burrito. No, no. He asked me what I was eating, Holmes. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. That's just my that's, that's just my mind in the gutter then. <laughs> <laughs> He's asking me what I'm eating, man. Oh, just... and you're eating a burrito? I, okay. I ate the burrito, yeah. Now, on, on a high note, though, when y'all do come to St. Louis, that's when we get y'all up here. We got to get you guys some toasted raviolis. Oh, that um, sounds good. That kind of like toasted pierogi. Like pierogi. Uh, you ever had pierogi, the Polish food? No, I, I, I don't know anything about Poland except for where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> you're better than a lot of folks. You're better than a lot of oh, lordy. I know some bad things have happened over there. Um, well, people, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, speaking, uh, no, speaking, no, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Tell us about those things you're talking about. Uh, toaster ravioli. It's a, yeah. it's a St. Louis thing. Uh, literally, it's kind of what it sounds like. It's ravs, but, you know, everybody eats them all soft and stuff. But we take them. The they breading's do. different. And they're, they're well, the okay. coating's different. They're breaded. They're seasoned. And they're great. You can ask American Gun Chick. I treated them the same while they were up here. Oh, Every okay. time people come through St. Louis, we make them eat toaster wraps. Man. That sounds like good eats. They're, they're good, man. Toaster yeah. wrap, and we do th thin crust pizza. So we don't do all the doughy oh, pizza. Thin crust is thin good. Crust. Thin crust St. Louis is good. style pizza. It goes yeah. fast, man. You can eat it fast. <laughs> and that's what happens. You get like a, a look. Like we uh, ordered one that was a pretty, pretty. It looks That's pretty not pizza, pizza, by the way. Thin crust pizza. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I mean, I'm is. sorry. I can't let that go, damn it. What you talking about, Hank? Thin crust pizza? What the hell? It's thin crust pizza. And it's delicious. No. Hey, hey, the other, the other night they were talking about some people are sig tards. Some people are glock tards. I said uh -huh. I was a gun tard. I like them all. I'm mm. a pizza tard. I like it all. So, you know, bring it on. Okay. <laughs> Tell you, man, you'll love some thin crust pizza. I feel more, yeah. our, we got, well, emos, but we got a lot of local spots too. Yeah. Toaster wraps, thin crust pizza. Yeah, but you don't have real pizza. You have some kind of. What do you mean like Chicago style pizza? No. Which, that's did, real I, pizza. did I say Chicago? <laughs> no. What other pizza you gonna bring he up? Chicago. Huh? Do I look like Obama to you? Oh dear. <laughs> well, he, I don't know. See. You're not from Hawaii. He's Plymouth from Hawaii. Rock didn't He's land Hawaii. on us. <laughs> We landed. I don't know. What, I, I what's that pizza that like, then, Hank? New what, York, New, New York, York style, style pizza style is the pizza only man. pizza. Damn it! Ah, uh, come on, man. That's where you ordered by the slice, right? Thin crust pizza is some thin ass bread that they that they that they um they slabber some freaking sauce on. Yeah, some sauce on some it. Some sauce. Yeah, <laughs> that's like that's not pizza. Pizza. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Such a hater. Sauce. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't it's be not mad pizza. pizza. It's not pizza, dude. American Gun Chick says it was awesome, Kevin. I see. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, American Gun Chick. She understands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've had Chicago style pizza, which I assume is something like New York style. That's like that um, big, thick stuff. No, it's thick. Here. About that thick. Yeah, big Look, pie. Yeah. Thin crust, baby. We cut the carbs okay. on the flavor. So I guess now we're never having American Gun Chick on the show. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Never. No, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That. I'm just kidding. I'm don't just kidding. Oh, man. Yeah. Tell me, thin crust is where it's at, baby. Mm, whatever. Well, it don't call it, it. Don't call it pizza. It is pizza. You trying to get me kicked out of Missouri? Call it's it it's sauce in her. It's sauce in her. <laughs> Got some sauce in her. Some sauce. Don't call it pizza though. That's all I'm saying. I was gonna ask Nelly. <laughs> now you're disrespecting the hood, so we can't. <laughs> oh dear. So uh, American Gun Chick says Kevin had the whole restaurant come over to our table and the employees. And owner and all that, she fell in love with it. Oh, I see. So you're no, schmoozing. You're schmoozing people. No, what what happened? What she's saying is, I, we were talking, and they overheard the conversation. 
and the uh, restaurant migrated to the positive conversation we were having and then it turned uh -huh. into a moment where they all got to be in being lovely and they loved what we were talking about maybe they subscribed to youtube channels of both of ours and became friendly if you oh, will not, okay that's cool okay that's what happens when nice people get in the room and talk <laughs> oh oh what are you what are you trying to insinuate <laughs> What is your situation? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to insinuate when nice people get together with toasted ravioli and thin crust pizza, great things happen. The world uh, thin, can be changed. Thin crust, whatever you want to call it, but it's not pizza. Okay, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, I, I get it. Shoot, okay. Disrespecting my pizza. Disrespecting my slang, my pizza. Cal L said, don't disrespect the burl. <laughs> That's a New York thing now. See, the burl. Y'all got burls. No, I said burl. Burls, burls, burls. I mean, burrows, burrows, burrows. Is that what you're talking about? Burrows? Oh, the God. jokes. So Kevin's gonna open up a pizzeria called Pizza Burl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, New York they can David go from Radford it. says New York about pizza the is the best, although any everything else about New York is garbage. Ask me how I know. He's gotta be from New York. But well, New York pizza is the best. I tend to eat places where I can carry my gun, so there you go. If that? I go into a pizza place and they don't know what a freaking should I should I say it? A a Zeppeli, if they don't know what a Zeppeli is, it's not a pizza place. I don't what know what it is. Zeppeli. It's not what a is? true. I hate to see like people who go, Oh, this is a true New York pizza place. And I'm like, okay, so um can, do you guys make Zeppelis? They're like, no, what is Zeppelis? We don't know. What is that Zeppeli you talk of? What is it? What is a Zeppeli? A Zeppeli, it's basically like it's like a little ball of fried dough dipped in confectionery sugar, and it's freaking awesome. Oh, it's kind of like a uh, a beignet. Uh, no, it's not a freaking beignet. <laughs> what the hell is a beignet? <laughs> oh, you, you gotta go to New Orleans then. Kevin. <laughs> it's like it's like a, a like a donut. no. A beignet is what you see at um. What is that restaurant? Uh, there's there's this restaurant that makes something they call Zeppelis, but that's a beignet that they make. Oh. In that, um, what is that restaurant, Lola? That they make Olive Garden. Olive Garden, yeah. Olive Garden thinks they know what a Zeppeli is, and that's a freaking beignet or something. <laughs> Not such nonsense. Okay, a real Zeppeli has all kinds of different shapes. It doesn't come in one conformed shape. It has different shapes. That's how you know it's a real Zeppeli. Some of them are big, some are small. If you don't know about Zeppelis, then you're not like you're probably not a New Yorker. You never had real pizza. Well, like I said, I like to go places where I can actually eat and carry my gun. So, yeah. My butt. So no, that's good. I'm glad. Uh -huh. Okay. They're talking about something I said was to clean my butt with. What the heck? I mean, what the heck? Oh. Anyway, listen, I'm glad you you uh, you took the uh, American Gun Chick crew out to a nice restaurant and, yep. Yep. you know, and showed them a nice time. Authentic. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. She's actually um, going to be down when, here. In, 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 when they came to hang with us, when they came to hang with us, Kevin, you know, we they, shot machine guns. Yeah, they shot machine guns. You know. Oh, pause, pause. She shot a machine they, gun. Here too. They, no, you said a machine gun. I said machine, machine guns. guns. Um, well, plural. Plural. As 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 you guys say, plural. Some, plural. Some of us shot, <laughs> plural. Some of us. <laughs> some of us don't go in our bedrooms and make machine guns. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wait for somebody to give me one. But she shot you. two. She shot two machine guns while she was here. She shot um, a PCC and she shot a uh, a M4. She shot two. Oh, okay. Well. But we got her first, though. So yeah, David well, Radford says he's he Italian and he likes the Olive Garden. Okay, but do you like real Zeppelis? Do you think the Olive Garden Zeppelis? You're gonna have to get me some of these I'm damn not Zeppelis. Knocking, I'm not knocking the Olive Garden Zeppelis. They're not bad. But, I'm gonna have to ask my uh, my my brother-in-laws from New York about Zeppelis. Yeah, but the thing that Olive Garden has is more like beignets. And anyone who's jumping into this show now is like, "What the hell are these people?" Talking? We I thought this was a gun. We, we went from the Second Amendment to dope. They're talking fat about dope. food, but we are fat dudes. Check it out, hey, we're fat dudes. What's and then wrong with the belly? Shirt, man. What's the, the big thing? belly's right yeah. here. Oh, this says, uh, "Yeah, group therapy." This is my Forge from Freedom shirt, by the way. Yeah, you can buy that. Group therapy. Yeah. yeah, shout out Hanks. to Forge from Freedom. Yeah, and go there and buy Hank's shirt in his gallery. Yeah. All right. What? Uh, yes, we have the Hank Strange collection on Forge from Freedom. See, I'm doing your thing for you. So, yeah, yeah thank you, Walter. That's why I love you. <laughs> you know, I, I think we should make a Burl T-shirt. <laughs> so we'll go in St. Louis. <laughs> we say Burl around here. <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh dear. Yeah. 
No, okay. I think Kevin, you, this is, you know what? You should make notes of this, oh, Kevin. So when you yep. go to Forge from Freedom and you start making your own t shirts, <laughs> you know, it's funny because I was going to actually, uh, uh, we'll talk off chat. Though. I was like, yeah, we got a few. And so we need to chat for you can help me out with it because you are good at something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lola was talking about funnel cakes. Oh, they're yeah. awesome. Uh, Scott Kimball Kimble says it's Zeppoli. Yes, and it's Zeppoli. Zeppolis are yeah. awesome. I like a good them. state yeah. fair funnel cake. You know what I'm saying? Um, no, 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 it's not. Mm -mm. <laughs> Zeppolis are way better than funnel cakes. I'm sorry. Somebody yeah. just compared it to a cinnamon uh, stick at uh, Taco Bell. Like the cinnamon twist at Taco Bell. Who the hell did that? Who is that person? How about, how about, a, how I want the a... name of the person who compared it to a Taco Bell cinnamon stick. Uh, Tango Hunter says Taco Bell has... Oh, Zippo Tango Hunter. Stick. I'm so ashamed of you now. <laughs> I do not think Zeppelis are a new gun burl. <laughs> when you say burl, I think about wood. That's all I think about is a nice... What? Oh, hey, burl. Oh, 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 no. real weird. No, wait, don't get it twisted. <laughs> no, 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 not that kind of wood. <laughs> Walter didn't say he gets wood. He said he thinks about wood. Wood on the stock, man. Wood on the stock. Oh my goodness. From Turkey, that kind of stuff, you know, like kind of oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. yeah. Cool. Yeah, burled. Burled. Burl wood. Yeah, burled right. wood. Let's put But see, to Kevin, bed. if you said burled wood, Kevin would be like, What? There's a what barrel the in the wood? <laughs> this is a barrel. There's a burl in the wood. <laughs> burl. I'm gonna show my, my expensive burl again. Burl. <laughs> I'm glad they took EBT. <laughs> All right. Really seriously. Okay, let's go. Can we do some? Uh, can we look at some guns for a change, Kevin? Okay, right. let's stop making fun of Kevin. Let's call a truce with Kevin. Let's call a truce because otherwise, if when we go to St. Louis, we're not getting the we ain't we're getting, getting the American gun trick check treatment. <laughs> we're getting the boot. That's what we yeah. get. <laughs> So what do you have, Walter? I think someone was asking to see that AK you were showing before. So oh, okay. Right. Well, what this oh, is, this is just a, a SBR AR 7-inch barrel with the compact entry stock on the back. Um, this one's um, been dropped to 16 lower on it, and it's a, it's a handful. So a lot of fun. All right. Okay. Have I shot that full auto? Yeah, I remember. I think you have at the house. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, one of those many we have done, so. Yeah, you get kind of jaded after a while. You know what I'm saying? Okay. No, I never, I never get tired of shooting full auto. By the way. Okay, this is an obnoxious ass gun right here. Oh, this one here is. I don't think I want to see this gun anymore. You see that <laughs> little know. break, right? You see that little muzzle break? I hate that muzzle break. <laughs> <laughs> this thing here, you get done, you go. Blah, blah, blah. You gotta shake your head because you're like. <laughs> when we left, uh, when we left the range yesterday, Lola was like, okay. That muzzle brake is totally annoying, and, and that's what for some reason Walter's favorite gun right now. Well, it, there's a reason why, because it's inner ordinance, okay? Yeah. So I got I got I shot another hundred rounds or so, went home, I checked the headspace. Oh, oh you're doing like your own inter ordinance. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, well, but Walter, that's as I keep telling you, that's not a fair thing. You went through this gun and you fixed it. No, well, the, okay. Here's the here's the word on inner ordinance receivers. They say that the barrel will come out. No, no, were, not the barrel, the burl. From now on, for this episode, it's the burl. The burl the will barrel. come out. Go ahead. The burl. The burl. My, the burl. I, can't, I, I can't say it like Kevin. I don't have the same accent. Okay. Um, but I'll say it like a southerner, you know. That barrel might come out if you're not careful because uh -huh. they didn't install it right. <laughs> so um, so the, <laughs> that's the word that I heard from all these haters. And The bird, bird, bird. So every bird, time bird. I get the bird, bird, bird. bird Burl's okay. the word. Um, okay. I got getting, back home and I checked I, before I came out this afternoon. I checked the headspace. Was we're it good. still good? Oh, okay. Yeah. We're good. So I keep yeah, shooting but, it every time we come out. A hundred rounds. Okay. All right. No, that's good. I know that's why you're all happy to shoot that gun. Congratulations. If it comes to you. apart, I'll be the first yeah. to say. Hey, now, should I bring up? Should I save this for another show, or should I bring up what happened with the P? Go ahead. Go ahead. Give somebody okay. a Woody. No. Go why ahead. did you tell us what happened with that three hundred eight? I take the PSA three hundred eight out there, everybody. Um, one mag, two mag. I'm like on the third mag of 20 rounds. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, no, wait a second. Hold on, Walter. You didn't get that far. Yeah, when, I did. You, when you started shooting that PSA 308, you had problems with the trigger. Remember that? Oh, it wasn't resetting quite right. It wasn't when you let go. It, you know, it, you have to give it a little touch to get it to reset. Uh huh. The trigger, the trigger was kind of sucky. Okay. But but this is a $600 308. Right, right, right. It has trigger, a nice barrel. The trigger barrel. resetting is. 
what's the least of my worries because probably just a little diamond file on one end it'll be fixed <coughs> third mag boom 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 stop i'm like okay so i'm looking around and it's like what the hell's going on the bolt won't close the, the ejector came out of the bolt head mm -hmm. so and it was up into the barrel extension laying up in there it broke off basically so yeah. i called him up today i got first i got home and i was going to fix it myself but i didn't quite have the right part so i called him up i had to wait a little while i was on hold with the customer service people when i got through the lady was nice she issued a you know a call tag and all that stuff send it back we'll fix it. i told them about the reset and the <coughs> and that the eject the ejector so i'm going to send it back they're going to fix it so yeah the archangel wants a barrel patch um you know what listen the barrel well, i'm gonna stop the barrel on that 308 was actually nice it's a stainless steel barrel yeah 18 yeah, had a st yeah barrel. 18 inch uh stainless steel that was what, nice midwest industries handguard yeah the handguard is cool but the trigger sucks well it it, it could be better yes yeah yes. from the beginning i'm not a i'm not a trigger prima donna long as it goes bang and it doesn't go bang by itself um because i know it's a military type gun i'm not i'm not expecting a, a target gun out of it i'm good with it but yeah i'm should, not that saying that every like you have to upgrade well. every trigger but that trigger <laughs> sucked man that trigger like you know had problems at the beginning i agree so. i agree i mean yeah. but they're gonna fix it so i'm i'm game yeah i'm gonna put it back in the box tomorrow and it's on its way so yeah tango hunter gave us two bucks i don't know if that's like that's an apology for yeah. Uh, speaking of apologies, Hank. Oh boy. <laughs> Apollo American, Jack. American you were just waiting gun, for that one. Go ahead. American gun trick. Do you realize you said that? No. No, I didn't. <laughs> she I even called that. it out on the chat. American oh. gun trick. <laughs> oh. Uh, did I say that? She's a nice lady. I never yeah, that wasn't deliberate. That wasn't <laughs> deliberate. Yeah. I know. It was still I am a fan. I am a fan, American gun chick. Yes, I'm a fan. You know that. Yeah. You know? um, so, yeah, I, I I'm a fan. If if that's how it, if I said that, if it came out like that, it was because my tongue is all twisted saying burl, that burl. instead of barrel. Okay. So blame that one on Kevin. That's all Kevin's fault. There you go. Be oh, so, yeah. So oh. I, don't worry. I'll make it up to you. <coughs> Is anybody? I'm just curious. I'm gonna throw a little politics out here. Uh -huh. Anybody following uh, the 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 latest with the Russian scandal? No, no. What, it's kind of it's went to the it's went to the demo Democrat side now, with uh, Putin and uranium and the Clintons, and um, it's not looking good for those guys. So, yeah, but what, you're gonna have to explain this. Like, so what do you? Well, mean? in the whole investigation, the more they dig, the more they dig. The collusion was not with Trump and the Russians. The collusion has been for years with Putin and the Clinton Foundation and the sale of uranium and other stuff. Um, hmm. So, yeah. yeah, it doesn't get much national press because it doesn't fit the narrative. Um, but so, yeah, uh, I think the Hill has something. I don't know if the Hill is uh, liberal or or conservative or whatever. One of you guys knows. Time for Jeff Sessions to investigate Hillary Clinton on Russia collusion. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and throw her ass in the clink. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, you know yeah. what? You know what? You, even if she doesn't stay very long, you have to do a public arrest. So it says, when the story broke in April 2015 that the Obama administration, with the help of Hillary Clinton's State Department, paved the way for Russia to gain control of 20% of America's uranium. It Hello. sent shockwaves through the halls of power in Washington. It caused red flags to go up and raised scores of questions with enormous implications. Many people wondered why the United States would give Russia and Vladimir Putin a sweetheart deal like this. In the context <laughs> of the 2016 presidential campaign, the central questions were about the money flowing to the Clinton Foundation. Accusations of pay for play with financial benefits for the Clintons winning out over national security concerns and why the Obama Justice Department seemed to do nothing about it. Because he's on the take too. Yeah, and it goes on and on. So yeah. How do you think how do you think he goes from being a lowly senator to a big rich guy? It ain't it ain't because he's a genius, it's because he's on the take. And they all do it. But you know, when you when you give your country up and you do uranium and give away secrets, you know, why do you think the Chinese have missiles now? 
because yeah. we gave them guidance technology. The Clintons gave them guidance technology. Yeah, it kind of makes you miss the good old days where dudes were just getting blowies in the White House. Well, yeah, yeah he got that too. But <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, but she still got the blue dress, so that's cool. Um, <laughs> Hillary is a Hillary is an interesting character. Just watch how much you you know is said about her. I want everybody to make it back to the next show. Yeah, she's an so, evil witch. What do you mean? Oh, well, oh, know, oh, people have a way of. Um, Are you they, saying something might mysteriously happen oh, to us? Are you gonna have the two? Saying, gonna have the two shot um, <laughs> suicide? Yeah, you know. American <laughs> gun chick says hashtag lock her up. Oh, I lock her but ass up. Not, uh, I, throw, I throw in the jail cell with Wanda and the rest of her good friends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. she's, um, she's a. Could you just imagine? Imagine a world where she gets everything she wants. Ask Man. the um, ask God. the Haitians what they think about her. Yeah, um, Dead Ender yeah. says Walter is under investigation for ties to the Russians, and Io called, and they want their gay AK back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good well, one. So okay, Junior. Walter, throw up a patch. I think Dead Enders deserves a patch just for that one. Show them the new patch, Walter. Let's see the new patch. Oh, okay. Got some new uh, Safety Harbor Firearms patches. Fresh off the Chinese boat. Oh, look at you. There you go. Boom. These are uh, uh, PVC, yeah. Velcro back or hook and loop back. Can't say Velcro. Yeah. Oh, you shouldn't say Velcro. But anyways. Oh, oh why? Are. Why? Velcro is somehow trademarked and we're not allowed to say it? Post it on eBay and see what happens. Well, that's eBay. This is my damn show. I'll say Velcro all I want to. You a Velcro toting mofo. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Velcro. This is my new, one of my new Velcro. favorite ones. Yeah. Our Secretary of Defense and his... Saintly yeah. pose. But. Archangel says Hillary for, for prison and beat her with a burl. <laughs> <laughs> what would be even better is if you beat her with Kevin's burl. Oh dear. I'm just saying. You know what? I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna say gonna that. drop it and leave that right there. <laughs> that's getting weird. Yeah, um, that's uh whew, I don't know. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Uh Peter Hinkle says it's the IO gay K. <laughs> <laughs> More, that's more not, hate. That's not right. <laughs> Feel the hate. The hate is strong with you, Hank Strange followers. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, okay, a little bit of love. That's a sig stock on there. Okay. So shut up and play your guitar. Say those patches look like the YPG patches that the Kurds have. Have you ever seen those? No, I haven't. But I, I'm yeah. all for the Kurds. To be quite honest with you. Yeah. The, the YPG is fighting ISIS. So. Yeah. The Kurds are the only ones over there that are halfway. <laughs> Hold on. They're. That are halfway but, civilized, actually. Yeah. To be honest um, Tango you. Hunter, you're back in my good braces, uh, good graces right now, because he said, "Call it Curl. Bell Curl, Bell Curl, <laughs> <laughs> Bell Curl." Okay, let's oh, trademark Amer that. We could trademark that one. American Gun Chick, I didn't have them. They arrived the Friday of the show, and I'd already left. So, um, yeah. Next time I see you, I'll stock you up with patches. That's for sure. <coughs> yeah. Oh, y'all got to be a got to be a, a beautiful woman to get patches. Um, well, let's see. Maybe, maybe so. Maybe so. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Well, I, just being honest about it. It doesn't hurt anything. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I am. I am pretty sexy now. I just like. Well, to you, 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 you got your cologne on. I do actually. Yeah. Eric okay. Garcia <laughs> says Kevin's burl just shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, this is gonna be a that's like it's hot and her. It's hot this, and is her. A, this is a steak moment. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh yeah. man, it had to be there for that. There's one. lots of hate. These guys like to hate. That's all. That's okay. <laughs> we we, lo we are hating on each other. That's okay. Yeah, it's fair. It's all, yeah, it's mutual hate. It's yeah, all fair. Man. Yeah, it's mutual hate. People. You know what, Kevin? Listen, be happy. You listen. Poor Patrick R comes on here just to be freaking trolled by by Walter. And, and babyface P. I didn't do that. You did. <laughs> I didn't do you that. did. I didn't uh, start that whole steak conversation though, that's for sure. Oh, so now uh, was your was your um was your Yes it PSA? was the PSA is staked on the stock. Okay, yes. it was staked, okay. That did not come loose. So points points for that. Yeah. So, um, but hey, I like I said, I'm not I'm not upset about it because I understand stuff happens, you know. You could have that. That thing could break on the best gun. Something like that could break. So, because mm -hmm. most most of those best gun manufacturers aren't making that ejector. Yeah. So, um, so a couple know. of things here. Crispy says um, to Kevin that he's 
He says uh, he's an old guy, and he got a patch and a shirt from Walter. An old guy. Yeah, and Tango Hunter says gas, cash, or ass. Kevin, nobody gets free. <laughs> um, I don't. Yeah, think, yeah, I don't grass. think Walter wants yeah. that ass. It's called yeah. grass, cash, or ass. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta have the weed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know about that. That you know, that same that's, lunatic weed might be too strong for you. That's oh, you got some of that, like uh, probably some Mexican dirt weed or something like that. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that stuff. I don't know. He doesn't know. know about that. He's claiming ignorance on that. Oh, that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah. Nope. Charles trying to be good, Mister X. Yeah. No, we will. Not. We will give out. We will be giving out some of those new patches from time to time here on the show. Yeah, I, so, I got a bunch you know, of them. We we will, bunch. Yeah, we will we will be doing that. So don't worry about it. They will be given out. And of course, are you selling those also? Um, yeah, the Safety Harbor ones probably too. Yeah, if somebody wants. You know, I haven't thought about the price though yet. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, that to be determined, I guess. I don't know. We get them mostly for the shot show and stuff like that. So. Mm -hmm. Give away a whole bunch of them there. So Joe Carpenter says, if you throw a barrel, does that mean you hurl the burl? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that uh, one sneaks up on you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too on tube says, gas, cash, or burl. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and play a guitar says, 55-gallon burl. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, uh, that's too funny. Uh, I'm sure glad it's not about me yeah. this time. Uh, shut up and play your guitar. Says I use my wheelbarrow in the yard. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nope, I got one in the backyard too. So, yeah, no worries. So. Uh, all right. So what's going on here, man? Where are we going yeah, next? So the new patches. Okay, we will show. I don't know if anyone else. Okay, you know what, uh, Kevin? Did you show? Did you show off your guns, or are you? Uh, <laughs> Kevin's now hiding under his hat. <laughs> um, no, I don't. No, the only one I will bring on in respect because of what I did this weekend is just probably if you guys tuned in late, you didn't see it, but just my good old trusty um, Black Rain Spec 15. All right. So, so if you guys haven't went on, give these guys a try. And no, let me say this. No, Black Rain has helped out with a couple of charities, but no, they did not pay me to say this. OK, so here you go. Okay. Right. Did someone Black ask? Rain. Uh, Black Rain Ordnance uh, Spec 15. Mine does have a few uh, mods to it because I just wanted to put like the Strike Industries on the bottom here. I'm starting to really like Strike Industries, by the way. Um, then I got their, uh, their break on it. But uh, Black Rain is good. And then I got the 1x6 on top of it um, and a Phase 5 bad lever. I really do like... I don't know why I like the phase five better than the mag pools, but I do when they're all theoretically the same thing. But I don't know. I just kind of like this one better. Okay. Really explain why. It stands uh, out a little bit more. Uh, the Tyvan Show says uh, Kevin will have T-shirts that say Burrowbalicious. Burrowbalicious. <laughs> <laughs> Burly Lubricious. Oh, and, and one other, one other thing with, with, before right. I forget why Tyvan's making fun of me is uh -huh. guys need, and Hank can contest to this. If you need a good light for your, uh, your rifle or your handgun, Go check the guys out of Enforce. All right. Okay. Nobody even pay me to say that. They are friends of mine, but Enforce does make um, make great lights. So, and then they're cost effective too. Uh, and I know surefires can be expensive. Like this guy, the 200 lumen guys, like 130 bucks, 120 bucks, or something like that. And the 800 lumen is like 160. So, good price point for the everyday common man, which is very important. Oh, um, I have okay. a little shout out for you guys that like to see stuff get shot. Um, the guys over at 704 Tactical. I, I gave them a, a 50 cal rifle. Um, just they asked me for one a few months ago and to do videos with, and I said sure. So I gave it to them. They shot a running car, and it's they, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Kill, was, was, was it was it white? Was the car white? Yeah, yeah I think I saw white. that on. They uh, had the blow to the hood of it. It went right through the the, the shot that killed it went right through the Chrysler emblem. So they killed it in one shot. It took two. Two shots, okay. The first shot kind of got wedged in the front of the engine. And the second one went right in for the kill. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Pretty cool video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sugar Bear wants to know if that was staked, by the way. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Garcia says that was a beauty. Um, Castle nut staked. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. This one is, yeah. It's like steak. I'm going to start thinking about uh, pizza again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm a, yes. Yes, no other way. Okay. 
You got there you go. There was a um, and then shut up and play your guitar. I want to know if that's a suppressor quick connect. Oh, on this that one, break. um, no, I, I have that on my um, I have that option on my 300 black album, not this yeah. guy. And is that a Geisley yeah. super dynamic trigger you have on there? Oh, yes, I didn't mention the trigger. Yes, that is a Geisley uh, three gun super dynamic trigger. Yes, all right, there you go. So Tony London wants to know what does this cost? Like, what's the uh, what how much money are we looking at for this? It's rifle. Our, yeah. Uh, you are looking if we're counting everything on it, probably around twenty five, twenty six. Okay. So um, Chris B says Walter, if you send him an SHTF fifty, he would make a dozen vid videos. I was gonna say vidges, and plugs, and he will plug the company. So there That's you go. Arms and armament. Yeah. Armament and arms. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Chris B. Um, oh, by okay. the way, uh, you know, I mean. Someone that you know does not even have a SHTF fifty yet. Well this guy. You're in the you're in the you're in the I'm on the list. I know I'm on the list. You're on the list. So let's talk about let's talk about this real quick. Oh, the yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Maxim yeah. fifty that we shot here. Yeah. Maxim fifty, check it out. So mm. what what did you think, Walter? Um it's kinda cool. Um um you know, uh, if you like to hunt with black powder. I, I wouldn't necessarily get it just to play with unless you got more money you, than you, you wouldn't want to play with the burl. <laughs> it's a little large for my I've seen life. you play with burls. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, time to time. Lots of black burls. Oh dear. It's <laughs> it's uh, it's <laughs> it's cool. But it's, uh -huh. it's probably not my on my list. To be honest with you, so yeah. Listen, this is not the kind of thing that you would rapid shoot. It really doesn't take that long. I'm I'm no. going to show the video, and we're explaining it and talking about it as we're doing it. And it, it doesn't take a terrible amount of time, but you know, this is kind of like a one or two shot thing. By the time you get after that, I think that you pretty much uh, most of your game or whatever you're going after. I don't know. Well, you usually get one shot. Out. Yeah, you know. you're gonna get that nice one shot. Um, the suppressor worked, right? It was relatively, yeah, yeah it was quiet. Oh, yeah, listen, for something, for basically an off-the-grid gun, you know, this is what I consider something that's off-the-grid. You can just go and order this from from uh, whatever company. Obviously, if Silencer Co. can do this, other companies can do it. Maybe we can yeah. get shorter barrels. Ooh, yeah. Maybe we can get pistols. Maybe you could you get... Know? Integrally, that is integrally suppressed. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, sorry. This is, yeah, this is integrally suppressed, <laughs> yes. Walter. But what I'm trying to say to you is maybe there's some other rules that we could break since this is a. Uh, what about a pistol you know, grip? Yeah, since this is a muzzle loader, maybe there's some other things that we could do. A pistol grip. Yeah. And a so I like and a bayonet lug. Yeah. Um. So American Gun Chick says you could hunt with it early, though. Yes, you got can. to shoot it at max. It was quiet. Yeah. Yeah. In Florida, I think a black powder is going on right now in Florida, I think. Yeah. So that's the one thing. Listen, I think there's a, a definite benefit to it. This is obviously the first time that a company is attempting to do it. And, a, and it costs a little bit of money because they're basically taking a, ready a gun that's pretty much already made. What is it? A traditions? Encore traditions, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, I don't know if it has, uh, has anything to do with Encore, but it's a tradition. Tradition, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's the name of the company. I don't know if you guys could see that there on the side of it. So it's a traditions. You know, it really wasn't complicated to do the whole thing, no, I don't think. It's no more complicated than regular black powder. So. Yeah, and it does get it does get really dirty, though, so you do have to clean it up. Uh, when you use it, um, you know, for us, this worked. So we, we followed the instructions. We used the uh, black powder that they suggested and all that kind of stuff, and it worked for us. You know, but it's, you might say it's not like exactly all of our cups of tea. If you're, if you're one of those guys that's in a hurry to do everything, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't going to be your thing. Yeah, no, but if you don't like, if you don't want to go through all the paperwork and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and you're and you want to use it for hunting and things like that, it's cool. Or if you just want it for the cool factor. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't see them so. baking them forever, so it'll be kind of collectible probably at some point. Yeah, yeah. you know, it would be definitely. So speaking of, speaking of suppressors, I have uh, two nine millimeter cans coming from Gentech. Gemtech. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So we're gonna have some more uh, some more stuff to compare with. Yeah. And just to, to throw more stuff out there before we start wrapping it up, um, ATN sent me something. 
check that out. Night oh, vision? you got one of them. Yeah. Thermal or night vision? It's um, it is the Excite Two HD. So yes, it is. Uh, it does have night vision and all that kind of stuff ah. built well, into uh, it. So um, you know, well, I haven't even taken it out of the box. I I can take it out of the box and show you guys. I've never used it. I don't know anything about it. Stay tuned. It's for a day night. It's a day night rifle scope. So oh, it looks like it comes with. Uh, Comes in a nice little bag. That looks little, like a man, like a man purse. Yeah, a man purse, whatever you want to call it. All right, couldn't help that. I don't know. I don't know what the slang is for purse in in uh, in you know in the loo. So, uh, it's so, a man bag. Yeah. Man so there bag. you go. It's a uh, purse. Yeah. So let's see what's in there. How much Velcro they got? Yeah, they got a lot of Velcro in there. I don't even know what this thing is. I, I think this is the, this is this looks like it's probably oh this is the flashlight, or the infrared. Oh okay. So it comes with the infrared, but you could probably use your own. That's it called it. That's called an illuminator. Yeah, and there oh this has a strap in it the bag by the way so you can truly get your man. Oh, you carry that crossbody. Yeah, you can get your man your man bag on. <laughs> so and there you go. It's not, um, it, I thought it would be heavier, so it's, you know, obviously has some weight on it, but you can replace this. From what I saw, I've never used, I, no, actually when I did the Brownells thing, I think I used the older version of this we were shooting at night. Um, you know, for the price category that this is in, you know, and the videos that I saw of it, I haven't tried it out. It looks like something cool. You can actually record your shots and all that kind of stuff. Oh, to take a um, card or like a yeah you, yeah it has um I think it's somewhere in here you could probably you could put in an SD card okay. and when you're looking through there it's got like an you're looking at an actual like a screen in there and it will record things and all that so you can show your That's nighttime cool. hunts so you know what Walter and I are going to be testing this out guys we'll put it on some stuff we'll get some suppressors on some guns throw this on and oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll set it up and we'll be out there hunting something at night and what do you think Walter Looking for that barrel in the woods. Yeah, looking for that bar, the bar, not the barrel, the, the bar. Yeah, how do you say bear, Kevin? Beer. Bear. 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 You want to drink a beer? A bear. <laughs> or bear. a bear. Okay, so what about a the one? Is a bear. So what about the the one that shits in the woods? What do you call that? It's a bear. <laughs> yeah. So we'll test we, we we'll test this out and see how it is. You know. Okay. Yeah, no worries. I, I don't know if it comes up to like the the you know, I don't know what did we test out you have like one of the old army ones. Did we test that, Walter? I have a thermal. Oh, I have a thermal, thermal one. Okay. I have a thermal one and I have on oh, let's see here. If I go around here. Yeah. One, two I think I have three um uh rifle scopes, night vision. Um right. they're not all the latest gen, probably first to second gen, but yeah, I need to I need to mount those up and try them out too. So, okay, cool. All right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that to actually testing that out. By the way, I know where I live now. Where you live, you I don't know if you can really do that, but where I live, <laughs> what, my place. Yeah, <laughs> you know, since we have like a bigger property and there's a crap ton of squirrels on there, who knows what's out there at night? But we're gonna find out. I could run run around the woods behind the shop. You know, that'd be kind of cool. It's, it's really dark out there too. Dark. dark oh, okay. Dark. Yeah. yeah, but we are we we're gonna put this to the test and see if it works, see if it captures. Yeah, you're gonna see some video. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll be bringing that to you guys in the coming days. ATN did send that to us, so Watch it's up. like a T and E. It's like a T and E thing. They sent me a eight a laser ballistics rangefinder as well. Oh, cool. And that yeah. thing is battery powered, but they sent me a backup battery for it. So it's like uh, let me see. It's in this box, and you uh. Nuclear powered? Well, because I heard the batteries die relatively fast. Yeah, night vision will eat up batteries pretty quick. Yeah, so I don't know how to get this freaking box open. Laser lubricious, Tango Hunter says. Huh? Laser lubricious. Laser, yeah. So here we go. This is like a big, a big box for. Okay, so there goes the battery. The battery is that size. The big box is for the bag for the battery. Oh, you got to have an extra. Oh. 
but so that's cool yeah you so you can use batteries and stuff like that if you want to do long term oh. stuff if you're out there hunting your various uh you know what i would really like to go hunt some coyotes they're in florida they're out there apparently what? you guys got a serial killer you need to go hunt what? um well okay that's in that's actually closer to walter that's in tampa Mm, really? They say there's somebody like doing that in Tampa. Uh, yeah, there's some. There's someone that's go. Okay, so you, you have to. Do you have that news? You have that uh, thing no, to pull. I'm, I'm, I got it off the chat. I can always look it up though. The chat. Yeah. Somebody. Yeah. If anyone has that, yeah, there is someone who's killed uh, quite a few people in Tampa. So that can... people aren't in any way connected, or they don't really have. From what I saw in the news. Oh, so. Okay, I, I have been. Yeah, TJ Blaze wants to know when I'm going to post the videos from this weekend. So what's coming up next week, month? Like this is today, Monday, a week from now, Monday. Walter and I are getting on a plane and going to Vegas for the SEMA show. So in the next week, I'm going to try to get as much stuff as I can get done, done, like actually edited and posted. So I don't know how much I'll actually get up there because I got a bunch of different things that I need to do. I need to go pick up the uh, the Brownells and Stag Arms Dream Giveaway 308 which is going to be nothing like a PSA 308. Ooh, nothing like that. It's going to be actually pretty freaking awesome. It's, well, it's all pretty now too, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I need to go pick that up sometime this week before we leave. So there's a whole bunch of things going on, but I'll post as much as I can, and then when we're flying around and stuff like that, I'll probably be editing. And, and we're uh, doing some stuff from SEMA too. we got to, uh, yeah. we got, we got to show some of the cool cars and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I invite all of you guys to follow us on social media so you can communicate with us. Tell us what kind of cars you watch, yeah. um, you know, all that kind of thing. If you know about something cars you're cool, into. if you know about something cooler you want to see, let us know. I like to see yeah. it too. So, yeah, yeah. we're going to probably stick to a lot of military vehicles, four befores, yeah. trucks, and stuff like that, right, Walter? Yeah, I like that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I like all kinds of cars. Yeah, so. I do too, actually. I don't so. discriminate when it comes to women and cars and guns. Don't discriminate. I'm a car tard. I like it all. Yeah. So yeah. So there you go. <laughs> so has the cute? Is the cuteness? Is the cuteness? Um, mood? Let's see if the cuteness is in a better mood. Kevin's muted, so we can't hear anything. Kevin. No, she's smiling the cute, now. The cuteness is smiling now. It looks. It looks. Do you want to say night night? You're right here. Just say night night. Why are you being shot at that? You love being in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, come on, Daddy. Enough of this talking. Enough of this silliness. Let's go. Hi. Fine. Now you want to get loud. Hey. We'll say, say night night. Good night. Good night. Go. Right, kisses. Good night. Love you. So you will. Why you hit me? <laughs> All right. So let me um uh, let me see. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yep. yeah, so uh, Gorilla and Guns is, I think he's leaving the chat. I just want to shout him out real quick because he's going to be a grandpa. So congratulations. Ah, right. congratulations. Yeah, congratulations to yep. uh, Gorilla and Guns. He's about to become a grandpa. Cool. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's always a cool thing when you become, you know, yeah. you, the next generation comes on. I wouldn't so. know about it. So You're not a grandpa yet, huh? And there's no mm. nothing in the imminent future. So. You're not in a rush, I take it. <laughs> well, if it happens, you know, it's great. You know, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, so. we're going to have to tell Will Killer Keller to get on it. Yeah, he's got to. No, I'm soon. Oh. <laughs> I'm staying out of that business. He's staying out of it. <laughs> is he I don't, watching? I don't, I don't, I don't First get of all, business. is he watching? Before we start I'm, talking about him, let's see. I don't, see. I don't get in his business like that. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you know. My dad didn't get my business. I didn't get in his business. Hey, yeah, you know what? I'd be happy to be a grandpa myself. You if know? it happens, uh, it happens. If it don't, well, yeah. Tony yeah. London says, keep an eye out for Corvette. I think, I don't know how much you guys are into Corvettes, but I oh. heard that there's a oh. mid engine Corvette coming Ooh. out. Ooh, Ooh. Ooh will, yeah. You might, see, you might see someone you know getting a Corvette <laughs> if a mid engine comes out. Yeah. That's, oh, you like that, Walter? Well, you, you like in, innovation? Innovation? Swing. Oh, okay. I'm glad. Okay, so Walter's liking the idea of a Corvette. Well, yeah, I, you know, they're cool. Yeah. Hey, so how cool is that? I I know enough about cars to be dangerous, but the, there was a movie with a Corvette. What is it? The Z1, the Z01. Z01. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, is that is that a real thing? Is that car really does what it was doing in that movie? Well, I don't know what it did in the movie, but the Z01 is the top end Corvette. Yeah. What movie yeah. are you talking about? It was a uh, it was one of um, one of Arnold's movies he just came out with not too long ago. Somebody in the chat helped me out. He was like a sheriff in a small town in I think Arizona, and the guy they, they 
there was a drug lord they had arrested and he broke out of prison and he was a race car driver and so he chose the uh, Will Killer. Oh, he had a Z06? Z06. Yeah. Yeah, Will Killer Keller is listening to us, by the way, Walter. <laughs> Don't ever talk smack about Will Killer. I ain't talking about he's listening. Yeah, he's listening. Uh, Will, grandbabies, work on that. <laughs> Don't rush Make it, it happen. Man. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, a Z06. Um, you know what? I think I saw that movie you're talking about with Arnold. Now, that is picture like a picture in that movie. But yeah, the um, Corvettes Z06. are pretty badass. I mean, they're, they, they in their minds, compete with Ferrari. You know, um, so they, the, in the in the race circuit, the Corvettes and stuff, and the Chevrolets and the Cadillacs, even they do they do a damn good job at racing. You know, yeah, so. I mean Corvettes been nice lately. I like the Stingrays. Yeah, yeah. With you, um, you know. the uh, the uh, ZL, the Z06 has got a different. If I'm not mistaken, it's got a different uh, uh, frame arrangement and a lot of carbon fiber and all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, TJ Blaze said he got his Marcus Allen Weldon book in the mail today. Very cool. Oh. <laughs> Very cool. My brother Anonymous also bought. Um, he bought it on the ebook. Is there an audio book yet? I don't. I didn't see an audio book. I'm not saying there isn't one. I just didn't see it. Okay, that might be a good thing for him to do. He could read his own audio book. Yeah, true. Yeah. That's not complicated nowadays. I guess. Oh, Last yeah. Stand. That was the name of the movie. But yes, you're right. It would not be complicated. Yeah. Um, Tybin says he'd like to see pics of the diesel-powered Jeep. If it's there, it'll be there. Yeah. Yeah, I think they had Jeep stuff there the last time we went oh, there. We did. We, yeah, we hit them. Yeah. Jeep is coming out with a bunch of stuff this uh, well next year. All right. So car car people educate me. So I saw this video where it was like um, it might have been a twenty five hundred series Ford get drugged by a Wrangler and something dealing with the the way the tires hit the ground. Like, why can a Jeep pull a 25 series truck? Why is that possible? When they were like playing tug of war and it just like drugged this. Uh, was, this in a, was this in a YouTube video? Mm -hmm. It was on well, it was on Facebook, so I'm assuming it's on YouTube. Yeah. Um, I think it depends on torque and uh, who started first. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's luck of the draw, sometimes, I guess, you know. I don't yeah. know. I've seen those videos too and going, oh, wow, look at that. But. Yeah. Uh, um, Scott Kimball says the Corvette in the movie was a Z1. Okay, okay. so we, someone's going to have to look that up, and I, I, I believe I believe Scott Kimball probably was. The movie's um, the last stand. I remember them saying Z1 in a movie, but it's called yeah. the Last Stand, and that car yeah. was doing some pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, Archangel says the new Vet mid-engine, six-speed, seven hundred horsepower, late twenty eighteen. What? So where your where's yours, Hank? What mine? When you got to my Challenger is 485 oh, horsepower. Yes. So, okay. All right. uh, just, so I, I could boost it up if I put a um, supercharger on it. Yeah, you don't, you don't. Yeah. Don't know. Listen, 700 horsepower is a lot. <laughs> that's a freaking lot. That's not, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Isn't it the yeah. Hellcat? The but, Hellcat got the or Hellscat or whatever the hell it is. I don't Hellcat know. Did Hellcat come up to? I don't think Hellcat came up to 700 I think horsepower. It was close to that. Yeah. The Demon, I think, is. Oh, I could be wrong. I think the demon was closer to that, but um, Hellcat is a bad mofo. I carry my revolver in single action. That's a big title. I tell you what, yeah. I carry my yeah. Um, Hellcats are pretty cool, and now the prices of Hellcats have come down. But you know what the thing is? Like I'm waiting for them to make the Challenger um, all-wheel drive. That would be that'd be pretty cool. That's what I would want. Something all-wheel drive. Thing, I thought that was all-wheel drive. No, the Hellcats not. Um, I think the one that's all wheel. I think the V6 Challenger is. You do have an all wheel drive option, but what the hell do I want a V6 for? <laughs> that would make no damn sense. I don't even know <laughs> who wants that. You don't I'm, want to be. I'm sure someone does. Huh? Environmentally friendly. Um, no. But that, um, no, get all the gas you can put no, in. I won't give one inch to the environment. Damn it! <laughs> I, I can will not surrender. Over. To the if I can dump 20 gallons of gas in that engine, we're doing it, baby. Go. I refuse to surrender for the environment. Nope, <laughs> nope, and no. Uh, you know, the earth will be around a lot longer than us, so hey. Um, I, listen, I do care about the environment, but yeah, um, but you know, you know yeah, in, in all honesty. But <laughs> I also up. want to live my life and enjoy myself. There you and, go. That's what it's for. So, you know, I, I, I like power. Turbo Subaru. So whether I use I it or not. That. Hmm. Um, you know what though? Has anyone seen? I don't know if you guys like Audis, but the Audi TT RS is actually pretty nice. 
A lot of Audis are nice. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's it's like 400 horsepower, but it's turboed. Is it all wheel drive? Yes, it's all wheel drive, baby. Swing. So it's pretty. It's actually pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but Lola yeah. won't let me get one. Well, Apparently, yeah. I'm not allowed. <laughs> yeah. I think you I've might tried. have. To, I think I've you tried. might have to trade something. Uh no, she's like nope, nope. you can't have that thing. No nope. period. No. Nope. So you know that's the, but but it's nice though. If you see, I actually like it. The Audi TT RS, the new one, it's actually yeah. pretty nice. So, yeah. um, you know, I like all wheel drive, huh? What all these made it? Austria or Germany, one or the other. Um, isn't it's like Audi and Porsche and uh, yeah, the all those, those are all the same companies. Yeah, they're um, part of they, the big, big. Also, they own Lamborghini too, right? They own a bunch of different. Um, um, I think it's a bunch of different. I think it's isn't it Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche. It used to be called Lamborghini. It used to be called Auto Union. That was yeah. the um, the old name for it with the, the multiple companies. But yeah, they're all part of a big corporation. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah, it says uh, Will Killer says Audi is owned by uh, Volkswagen. So there okay, you go. Yeah. Hey, here's a story about Volkswagen. Some of you guys probably don't know. You know, after the war, the American companies got chances as reparations to get companies. And and Ford was offered Volkswagen in reparations, and they turned it down. Oh, wow. That was a mistake. That was, that, was, that a, was that a bad choice or what? That is the worst <laughs> thing since... Um since the uh, the peoples, the black peoples of America didn't get their reparations, and okay, well, that's a whole in the other subject. But yeah, yeah. Let's get let's get you know. What, what do you say to that, Kevin? <laughs> well, reparations? Huh? It's, it's, yeah. it's something that's due that will never get paid. Yeah. So another group of people who never got their reparations. <laughs> yeah, will never get paid. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. Some of the jokes. You, you ever see the the, uh, the Chappelle show? The way they did the joke about reparations? Yeah. Uh, I watched the clip. I, funny, I watched the clip of that today uh, on Facebook, and it was um, it was it was pretty bad. It was funny. It was pretty bad. It was just making jokes about how uh, Cadillac stock went through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, uh, like what would people what would people do with their reparations? I hate well, to first say that. He said there was, also, there was also jokes about KFC and stuff like that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I said chicken, but, chicken, uh, bucket of chicken value. Oh, yeah, listen, dollars. if you think about this for a second, dude, forty acres and a meal from way back when. Mm -hmm. If you add like the amortization, oh Jesus! <laughs> what's actually going to happen is the value of the dollar will will die. Yeah, because no, yeah. you just it was, and it was over. It was over promising in at that point. You couldn't give everybody at that point. Yeah. It was just uh, well, every, you know. Listen, let me tell you something. It's the the dudes who went back to Liberia. Those guys got the short end of the burl. Well, a lot of them did quite well until you know. Mm, yeah, Liberia is not so awesome anymore. Well, that that's only their fault. That's not our fault. So yeah. So, um, um, okay. So Robert Laferg gave us five bucks. He says Audi TT is good if you don't mind being decapitated by an eighteen wheeler. <laughs> well, that can well, okay. That could happen in any sports. That car. could happen in that vet. That could happen in a yeah, Fiat. That could happen. happen in, you know. Hey, you better not mess with eighteen wheelers. I'll just I'll oh, tell you that right away now. from the eighteen wheeler. Yeah. Fast yeah. and Furious, they went up under the eighteen wheeler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Else yeah. Says forty acres and a mule at NLC. So let me ask you a question about the because you know you're you're like as opposed because people might not understand this. So I'm gonna set this question up. Okay. Um, you know you're you're a, a, an American of black descent yes related to the slaves that were slaves in america my people were slaves in south america mm -hmm. in guyana now does that mean if there was reparations do i get some of that you that's all i want to know yeah, can nah. i get some of that trump money we might let you ride the mule no you can no, you can wait, 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 wait. you can work at hank's house <laughs> I mean, you can work at Kevin's house. That's what you can right. do. No, no. In that yeah. case, I'm. In that case, I vote no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I remember it was. It was about ten years ago, man. People made a big thing about that, and I'm not saying that people shouldn't pay debt, but I'm like, at this point, it's like how. There's so how, many people it, old money in America. It's not just. It's not just. It's not how just, is it? It's how like is a lot it? of people old money in America, dude. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know how you can. 
That's like talking about we're supposed to be paying the Native Americans for for land. I'm like, well, forget about that. I mean, there's just so many people that is old. <laughs> yeah, it's not. So it's, if you think you're ever like, yeah, man, it's not every happening. every group that's came here has been mis uh, been abused. Everybody, the Irish, the yeah. Chinese, the Ty da, da, da. yeah. Tyvin Show says that's why Volkswagen did well. Ford didn't get their hands on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Ford did okay after the war. I think they I think they did um, all right. Yeah, they yeah they, they did fine. They did good. And and you know Ford's Ford's actually not a bad company. I think no, they didn't take any Obama money, so they're an excellent company. They didn't yeah. get their hashtag Obama money. No Obama money for those boys. Yeah. Nope. No. If, if you if you I'm telling you if you really want to read uh for it, I'm, a, I'm a I'm a logistics geek and a, a business uh guy. If you want to read something interesting, read up about Ford's logistical plan about how they um, they brought and saved so much money uh, during the war times. Like those guys were ingenious. One thing they did is uh, for every time they ordered the nuts and bolts, they made they ordered it in uh, wood that had to be made a certain way to specific di diameters. When you ordered your nuts and bolts, it had to come a particular way. You know what they did with the boxes? They, they made uh, the battery holders. So, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't okay. know. Just small stuff so, like that made that company really turn, man. Plan, planning ahead, planning ahead. Yeah. yeah. Because Japan was killing us with the JIT system, um, and we wanted to become more efficient. And Ford had the first idea about how to make things more streamlined, how to use everything that comes in for something else, how to really recycle your supply chain. And so we kind of took it from the JIT system over uh, in Japan and made it Americanized, if you will. And Ford was the first uh, ones to revolutionize that. So. It's an interesting read if you ever want to read up on. I geek out about that kind of stuff. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, even Honda and and Toyota and companies like that got what they, you know, they were able to build up off of what Ford did. So, you oh. know, wasn't I'm sure it wasn't all awesome. Oh, yeah, know? Honda. Yeah. You know, a lot, yeah. A lot of those uh, big executives in Japan um, after World War II, where most of those people were war cr criminals. Mm -hmm. We didn't go after them because they had the, uh, the all the the chemical weapon research and stuff. And we wanted that stuff because we couldn't test it on people like they did. Mm -hmm. So they, they let a lot of those guys go. And those guys were Mitsubishi executives, Honda executives, Kawasaki, a lot of them. So yeah, yeah, a, a lot of that kind of crap happens. Okay, okay. so let me see. I, I'm going to hit one more thing here. Did you get and this is like gun news. So did you this was in the news. Kevin is the sports guy. Oh. NFL's Nigel Bradham dodges bullet in loaded gun case. So he, Philadelphia he, Eagles linebacker Nigel Bradham just caught a huge break. Prosecutors have officially let him off the hook for bringing a loaded gun into an airport. What he was, city? He was arrested at a Miami International Airport back in 2016 after he put a local uh, loaded gun through the x-ray machine. He claimed he simply forgot the gun, was in a zippered part of his backpack that he rarely used. He was charged with a second degree misdemeanor, but the charges have been dropped. So we can go on with that. So what do you think about that, Kevin? I think um, I think he might want to stand up for America. I think he might want to stand up at the next uh, singing of the national we don't, we don't, anthem. I don't, I don't really know who he is, so we don't know if he kneels. He might be a guy that's yeah. already standing. Yeah, because I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hey, um, that's America. Uh, would, would, that that happen, right there. would that happen to Common Joe, though? Um, well, I want to say this. I've known people. I, I there's can't people who've done that in Miami and gotten away with it. So okay, I've well, known yeah, people yeah. do that and and totally like be you know just forget you know it can happen. And, um, you know, you threaten your nervous as hell and it, it, it goes away. I've known like three people to do it. And they, none of them got charged. So All that's right, well, yeah, that's, if it's, that's if the it's, way if it's, it should be. I mean, if he didn't if if he's not a bad guy, if he didn't do anything wrong, if it's if an honest mistake. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, we should have prevent. Now, if this would have happened to him in New York, he'd be screwed. Oh, or in, in one yeah. of those other because. Like how all those people are all in super liberal or whatever and all that kind of stuff, but he did that in New York, they would have like he would have had a big have, problem. And an has, of them. It has to be nerve wracking as heck, man. Because coming from shot last year, I left some. Uh, I accidentally between all the pack and left um, some mags unloaded in my bag. Well, that's uh, not a problem. I took them with me. Oh, oh not your carry, not your carry on, right? No, no, that's the thing. It wasn't my carry on. Oh, okay, well, that's bad. Then yeah, yeah. I had them in a separate bag and it went through, and the guys like. You, you can't bring gun parts, but I'm thinking I've separated everything. You know, I know what you can't can't bring. I just right. forgot them. And I'm like, dude, no, there aren't any gun parts in my carry on. He's like, magazines count. And then it hit me. It was like, oh, those damn signed mags. Crap. 
because <laughs> uh, I didn't want uh, them in the regular luggage. But I had forgot about it. I forgot. You know what you should do next time you go to Shot Show? What's that? Get your burrow signed. I'm not carrying a burrow. <laughs> I'm not carrying anything unrelated to, to Vegas this Get your year. Get the sign. <laughs> Man, they had me sit down and a cop came up. But you know what it took? Oh, I, could, I couldn't resist it. You, go, you go down to that little shop in the in the lobby and you have your mail, your stuff mailed. That's what you do. Yeah, I started. I had enough room. I just forgot, man. But the uh, the TSA guy was cool. He was just like, well, technically, I got to tell um, Las Vegas PD who was standing there. He was a gun dude. Because he, he laughed, laughed probably. He went, yeah. And he was just like, yeah. So it was like, mm -hmm. dude, it's just like a warning. Just don't do it again, type of thing. It took him seven months to mail me a letter. I just got the letter about two months ago. Did they take him? I'm saying, hey, don't do it again or whatever. But you know, yeah, it's not right. You lost the mag. You lost the mags though, right? No. Nope. Oh, they let you go? Yep. They let me put them in my. What happened is they said, um, we well, you can we can try to mail them, or you can try to mail them, or you can try to catch your carry on. So, I mean, your uh, your check bag. So I ran back downstairs and big shout out to Southwest Airlines. They couldn't get my bags back in time because they had already went through clearance. But the lady was nice enough to find me a box oh, with foamies. Yeah. And she let me put it in a box with foamies and did not charge me for a third uh, bag. And she sent them. She put them in with myself for free. So that's awesome. awfully nice. OK, cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know what? Let's uh, let's wrap this up. Because I think I may be getting into another chat after this. I'm not 100% sure. Uh -oh. All right. So, yeah, um, I will let you guys know if there's people who are hanging around. I might be in another chat, but I'm not sure right now. So, And we've been doing like two and a half hours, according to Lola. I'm going to go chat with my wife. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, you so go. there you go. And uh, make sure you pack up your burrow. I'm packing up my burrow right now. You know, she might want to see my burrow. Oh, yeah. oh, dear. I don't know, man. Oh, dear. Hmm. I don't know if she wants to see your burrow right now. Uh, I don't know. I got to. Yeah, but go ahead and put that. Uh, go ahead and put that bag back over your burrow. <laughs> wrap that burrow. Slip that. Slip that on right there. Right. Well, I don't have to wrap the burrow up when I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Oh dear. Got it. Come off. I think I put it on the wrong way. That's what yeah. she said. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, you know what? Let's uh, let's wrap this up. All right, Kevin, what do you have to talk? What do you have to? Uh, what do you want to plug before we go here? Uh, nothing, guys. Make sure that you uh, you follow me on a uh, uh, YouTube. I can definitely use your help there. It's a NLC Firearms channel on YouTube on Facebook. Please give me a follow or feel free to comment, interact at NLC Firearms Training or Kevin Dixie D is and Dog I X I E on Facebook. Also, Instagram at NOC Firearms Training. And uh, it's if you fill in your heart to help out with all the charity events we do and all the community awareness and um, bridging gaps between peoples, uh, feel free to hop on Patreon if you want to help. That's uh, Patreon backslash NOC Firearms. I do it right that time, Hank? Uh, yes. All right, good. Um, and other than that, uh, stay tuned. This week, we're going to be at the big uh, Monster Match shoot in Missouri. So I'll be out there Sunday. If we have signal, I'll come Facebook Live and let you guys see 150 comp shooters run against each other. And we'll be out there probably representing proper and um, uh, doing things uh, right, getting guys in the right gear and things like that. And Saturday, I will be coming live from an event that uh, I'm kind of glad that they invited me out to. It's uh, Project Safe House. We're going to be giving donations back to um, Safe House, which is a... Um, a shelter that protects women from uh, men that are battering them. Uh, so we can't meet the women because it's a safe house. Yeah. Uh, but we'll be there providing the guys apparently have been known to like come to the events and like try to figure out who the workers are for they can like harass the workers to figure out where the girls are. So mm -hmm. the no other choice family will be in attendance to make sure that kind of stuff doesn't happen and we'll be donating to the event. So stay tuned okay. for Saturday and Sunday for that. Awesome. Walter, what you Facebook, got? Facebook, Instagram. On? Stay tuned on Facebook and Instagram. We'll be posting some more videos of last weekend and some pictures and stuff like that. So, and um, if you want, I think I'm gonna build me an HK clone, no. shorty machine gun just for just for Kevin. I think I might paint it red too. Oh. Now that I think about it. Yeah, red and black. That might be the build. You never. That'd be yeah. cool. You know. Yeah, but, red and black, and then just put put put. I'm gonna send you the logo. Throw it on there too. You got money. <laughs> like <it's>, yeah. <laughs> Man, he wants it all. <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta give you credit. But anyways, we're doing that stuff, and uh, like I said, I can't say we're getting ready to go to SEMA. We'll be doing some stuff from there. I hope, I, I plan on doing something from SEMA. So, stay tuned.
That's it. Man. Okay. All right. Cool, man. Um, now on my on my end, what I want to do is like shout out to all the Strangeaholics family out there that are right now going through, you know, different situations with members of their family in terms of them, you know, dealing with illness and and obviously Tyvin lost his grandpa. I know Chris has some issues going on with his mom and the Archangel has some stuff going on with his wife. I hope things get better there. Our condolences once again go out to Tyvin uh, on the loss of his grandpa. I want to thank everyone for hanging out in the chat. Uh, we really appreciate that. If you're wondering what hangout I'm going to be on, I'm not sure right now. I think it's going to be with BSO if it goes down. <laughs> I don't know. He's, uh, you know, I got to talk to him about it because I've been doing this thing. So we'll see what goes on with that. So just keep an eye out on YouTube. It's going to probably be on VSO's channel if it happens. Um, I want to thank everyone that sponsors the channel. That would be Safety Harbor Firearms. Okay, Brand COP. <laughs> okay, like it or not, Rand COP. <laughs> Andrew's Custom Leather and, um, of course, Big Daddy. Big Daddy Guns, those guys right there. Big yeah, Daddy those guys. guys right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thanks to Big Daddy Guns for always allowing us to, like, bring in the guns. That's where we got the Maxim 50 from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they ordered it as soon as it came out. They were one of the first people to order them, so that's we we were able to shoot it. What's the serial number off this one? I didn't even think about that. Uh, there isn't one. <laughs> yeah, you fool. They don't have no serial number on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, it doesn't need it. Well, they probably okay. have some, some kind of mark on it so they can trick. Yeah, I'm, there's probably something because for warranty be, work or something yeah, like there that. There has to be yeah. some way that you know. Yeah, for warranty. Yeah, there has to be something, but I guess oh, hey, it's not. I don't really see. I don't. Let me see. I don't want to go into a, a big dissertation, but I did call Celtic mm -hmm. today on my uh, on my sub two thousand. Okay. And I'm getting that. I'm sending that thing back for work too. So. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. They they were real quick on the draw, getting back to me too. So. Had, yeah. Had, good for them. Yeah, the customer service uh, is is good stuff. The you know it's good cool. stuff going on there with the customer service. Yeah, if you have problems with it with your Celtic stuff. Definitely, uh, you know, get in touch with them, send it back, or do what you have to do. All right, man. So that's it. I think we covered everything. I don't know if I'm. Oh, I forgot. I did forget something. I want to thank all the people that support us on Patreon, right? So we're Patreon slash Hank Strange. Uh, Walter, you're Patreon slash so Safety Harbor Firearms. Arms. Yep. And Walter's going to use that money to build up some guns that people are interested in. Just more so stuff, you know. more stuff. Yeah, work on guns. And then, Kevin, you did mention yours, right? Yes. Patreon slash NOC Firearms. There you go. NOC. Awesome. All right, that's it. We're out. Peace. Peace, guys. See ya.